Guys, welcome to uh, a special edition of Snake Talk. Normally, it's myself and Jay solo, Ooh. but tonight we are blessed with a plethora of people. We have Jay in the control room. Of That's course, me. we have the most uh, uh, requested return guest uh, to the, this thing. Brother Clint's in the house. How are What's you, up, sir? Man? Nice. Doing great. Glad to be back. That's awesome. Well, we definitely enjoyed. Like I said, of all our guests, we definitely have had more requests for you to come back than anyone else. And of course, we have the uh the estranged lori in the house <laughs> yes, estranged i yeah. am still alive yeah lori's right still here. alive and around yep. good to see it's you. uh we don't see her that often anymore since she decided Just to move faint out whispers in the halls so since she's decided to to go on their, her next quest in life yeah her. you know she's she's actually working in min- being <laughs> a grandma <laughs> yeah, she's working in the ministry oh well, good uh, just good. like brother clint that's how we got yeah, brother clint back she's, yeah she's at the monastery <laughs> five days a week yes uh, but no she's did you know that we had a grandkid I did, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so so uh, uh, Nathan James and Lori, of course, watches him five. Well, this was the first five days. Yep. It's, we've been blessed to only have four days a week or sometimes <laughs> three days a week up until now. But And I will say, you know, it, it, it's it's hard. to. That, of course. That fifth day was difficult. This week, it felt like she was gone felt like forever. forever, yeah. Yeah, it really did. really did. And I saw you Monday, too. I so. was literally going to say, and you were out of town yourself. So <laughs> yeah. I can tell you from experience, like when our kids were young, if it hadn't have been for my mother-in-law, we would have been in trouble because we were both working. You know how in your 20s, you don't have yep. anything. Yeah. And we had to work and make that money. And just having that free babysitter yeah. was like oh, it's a lifesaver. thousands of dollars a month, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, so we nice. talked about that. I mean, I think, what did they say, like, child care was... Because because I think in August oh, they're going to start doing some childcare, but it eight, was thousands of dollars a month. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous, and B, you can't get it. You literally have to get on a list for daycare before you're pregnant. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like when you're thinking about wanting to have a child, you have to get on a list to hope that you'll get over. That's insane. That doesn't make any sense to me. Well, it can make sense. I mean, no, if you're going doesn't. out on a good date, you <laughs> you're know, not supposed to like, have sex hey, before marriage. Yeah, you know yeah. What, guys, we should probably sign up for daycare. Yeah, she goes like, hey, it's going to be a fun night tonight. Sign up for daycare now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Need it. Uh, by the way, you guys can hit us up with super chats. That's a crazy New Zealand super chat right there. There it is. Uh, so uh, obviously, you can ask uh, myself. Obviously, if you guys hadn't watched, uh, we're gonna. I'll put a uh, somebody. Can, could, Tiffany. Tiffany's in the house, right? Yeah, yeah. Tiffany, if so. you could do me a huge favor, if you could uh, find Link the other podcast, a podcast that Brother Clint was on earlier it was like a year ago year year and some months ago I think it was um, the first been wondering one yes it i was. think it was the first been oh, wondering was. it was like it okay. was called like exorcist or something like that <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. but if someone could put a, a link in the the chat room so people could go back and watch that uh we were joking because of course the basement was completely not done and uh it was a, a dr- disaster down here and uh and and yeah you were our first kind of you know, guess that wasn't it wasn't us, right? Yeah, I, yes. I think like Max Strong. Max Strong, yeah, Max Strong, Strong was, was here. Was, yeah, yeah, I think he had been that here. Was upstairs. Yeah, that's when we stood upstairs. I think you were the first guest downstairs. downstairs. Yeah, the first guest downstairs. So, and like I'd mentioned, tons and tons of people since have said, "Gotta have Brother Clint back." So, <laughs> so we won't be talking as much about uh, exorcism tonight, of course. But, uh, but we, uh, but you know, you're you're a reptile enthusiast, animal enthusiast, my whole life, and reptiles. Uh, I mean, as long as I can remember. Yeah, I yeah. grew up in the middle of nowhere and my dad's family was farmers and Mm -hmm. uh, we bred German shepherds for farm and police work and some pets too and um, we had over the years I remember waking up and finding spotted salamanders in my dog's dish oh that's awesome (laughs) wow I mean we were just in the middle of nowhere I was seven my dogs were so well trained I was seven and my dad and mom would let me explore the woods by myself with my German shepherd oh my gosh (laughs) literally I, I have so many Indian artifacts and Really? Now, wait, where'd you grow up? I'm sorry. In Wells County. This was down in southern Wells County, Indiana. Okay, so so Northeast you've always been Indiana. from Indiana, then. Yeah. Gotcha. Now, do you live? You live in the same area? Do you move more more? Pretty much. I've always lived south of Fort, just south of Fort Wayne. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. It's Where uh, we have shout out Fort Wayne Children's Zoo. And, oh yeah, is it good? Yeah, it's a child. It's geared specifically for children. Okay. Nice. Since I was a kid, so they have a lot of school trips and stuff. Okay. So I had the dogs, and I, I bred show dogs and show cats for years, and um, really enjoyed that. Um, did a lot of rescue work along with that as well. Um, year later on, I got an ex- I did an internship with a veterinarian and started pursuing maybe a degree in animal science. Oh wow! But uh, I ended up enlisting in the army. So oh my gosh, I didn't even know. I wanted to see the world. 
You're, did you see the world? No, that's how I found out I had Marfan syndrome. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. So. so I ended up going to college to become okay. a minister. But during that time, I put myself through college, um, mm. working uh, as an assistant manager at two major uh, pet supply stores. Okay. And, uh, so you've been, you're, you're kind of like, it's interesting. So there's some people like you that have done a lot. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like yeah, you're yeah. Very, there's a lot of layers, you know what I mean? And if you're, I told you the membership to all the animal clubs I belong to would take forever. <laughs> really? I, I, I bred parrots. I uh, had golf and cockatoos. Oh, I, really? I've hand fed hyacinth cockatoos. Hyacinths are from amazing. Babies. Yeah, hyacinths are a bit. You know, I you know I always I've told this story before, but we got offered, and I'm such an idiot. We we got offered uh, a free hyacinth from a friend of ours, and we turned it down. It's a ten thousand dollar bird. Now they're twenty five. No, now you're they're twenty five thousand. For saying no, <laughs> wow, it didn't. It yeah, did they've gone. They're twenty five k now. Life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. No. But I do love hyacinths. They're yeah. my favorite of all the big birds. Yeah. And and uh, two hundred, three hundred dollars a month to feed them. They have a really high fat diet content really? requirement. Yeah. But they're supposed to be so smart. And that's the thing too. Bird like they can take a high, finger off. Yeah, yeah that's, high yeah. maintenance, high like that's you're making a commitment when it's you're feeding an animal. Like, yeah. It's more than a baby. Yeah, Actually, for seventy a baby, years, a yeah. human baby is easier. Yeah. I think. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> a human baby is ten times quieter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. Too. They I had a golf and cockatoos, and my wife had our second child. And um, well, I wish I would have kept the cockatoo now, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but she <laughs> she said it's me or the cockatoo. <laughs> <laughs> Every night when the bird was, was going to roost, they make noise like they do in the wild. Well, she was trying to get the kids to bed. Yeah. Uh, and the neighbors could hear what my cockatoo going nuts. So, oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah, we actually, Lori and I were down in uh, Gosford, New South Wales in Australia and, and staying at a friend of ours, uh, John Weigel's, and uh, – and, and we had a chance to feed them every morning. Well, cockatoos. that was cool because those were wild. They were wild. Which is yeah. crazy. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Which honestly Super is the perfect cool. one because yes. then it's just like, okay, there you go. And there's no care. But, yeah. There's no cleaning. They just poop outside. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But what would happen is every morning he would throw yes. seed for the cockatoos and then he would throw little pieces of meat for the kookaburros. Yeah, and oh, so that's and that's awesome. how we'd wake up in the morning. Remember the first day we were there. You know, we had never been to Australia. I didn't really even know that much about Australia. I watched, you know, Croc Under. That was about the <laughs> yeah, I knew same. about yeah, Australia. Yeah. And uh, kookaburras and, are cool. Yeah, and and so I thought I was cool. like, are there monkeys in <laughs> Australia? Because they sound kind of like a <laughs> yeah. monkey, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and every morning we'd wake up because it was very it was a subtropical rainforest where it's literally we were staying in a property that had like a big nature trail into the, the rainforest. That's awesome. Uh, and most people don't know that, you know, uh, the whole coast of Australia, the majority of the coast is subtropical rainforest. Everyone thinks of Australia as desert, the desert, yeah. but actually the coasts are, are very tropical. Mm, and that and, where like 90% of the people live too. That's, and 90% of the people live in like 1% of the country's <laughs> ma land mass, you know? And uh, so, yeah, so you've got, you know, obviously Brisbane, Sydney, you know, up into to Townsend and stuff like that, into to, to Cairns and so on like that. On the east side and then on the west side, you just basically have Perth, right? Once you get north of Perth, which is, Perth is very southwest. And once you get north of Perth, no one lives there. You know what I mean? It's like one, you know, per per million acre capita or <laughs> yeah, something yeah. like that. But, uh, um, but yeah, I remember. All the interesting herpetoculture out there. Oh, it's so crazy. I mean, it's like, it's, it, it is the motherland of reptiles. Do you know that they recently, I was going to bring this article, I forgot. I'm a member of the, one of the million, American Federation of Aviculture, okay? So uh -huh. they send us our newsletter every quarter. And this last quarter, the story was there are these birds. They're like a, about like a budger agar, about mm -hmm. what we call a parakeet yeah. here. Um, but they're a little more parody, mm -hmm. so to speak. Well, they're a, a nocturnal bird. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. It's like a nocturnal bird. Parrot, wow, one of true. only two or three in the world. Wow. And they burrow. They, make, they burrow. They thought really? they'd been extinct for over 100 years. What? And no. they just refound them. Yeah, but recently they found carcasses on the road in this area that they, uh, they thought. And this was in Australia? Oh my gosh. Is, yeah. Oh, that wow. And way out in the desert part, like the wow. central desert is where these yeah. are found. And they last they knew there was like one remaining flock of 50 left or something. And that was a long time ago. Yeah. And then they were assumed all gone. Nobody could find yeah. them. And they found these carcasses on the road, and they're like, "Hopefully, this is what we think they are." Yeah. And they did. It took them forever out there, searching and searching and following sign, and they found a flock. Wow. You know, now they know there are at least fifty. 
Wow. Which is enough to, <laughs> That's amazing, now that they'll it? be protected immediately, yep. they can easily bring back the species. And it's probably yeah, not yeah. the only group. And this is a, a perfect argument of why Bigfoot exists. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And I think that's, I mean, that's where you were going with the story, right? That was the whole purpose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the purpose oh, of the God. story. All okay. right. Let's okay. hit a couple yeah. supers before we get going. If you guys have any questions, hit us up in the super chat. We're happy to answer. Timothy says, long awaited return. Welcome back, Brother Clint and Lori as well. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Thanks, man. Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Holly. From New Zealand. Yeah, I don't hey, know if they you got remember. a bunch of weird birds in New Zealand. That's they, for sure. They do. And uh, I don't know if you remember last podcast, uh, Holly said that she'd be sending some... Uh, coffee bill some, So she's sending bill as well, but and some chocolates, but also that uh, Tuatara coffee. Oh, so so she said it's on right. our way. So we can't wait, Holly. We're excited. Thank you, Holly. This is awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to have to give you the P.O. Box key so you can start checking. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been here. to the P.O. Box in forever. <laughs> it's probably <Have> been? <laughs> bursting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, have you been hey, to Turkey? Oh, I they probably yeah, they're probably so mad at us. Yeah, or they're returning the stuff. Sorry. Yeah, but because I'll our our PO box <laughs> is like whatever. Busted. Yeah, uh, turkey's in the house. Turkey lipstick says, "Brother Clint is back. I hope you guys are having a freaking awesome Saturday and great to see Lori. Been a minute. Yeah, it has Thank been you. a minute. Yeah, it is good to have nice uh, to Clint back, and it's great to have uh, my wife back. <laughs> <laughs> Eric says, "Glad to see you, brother Clint. Uh, is back. Really enjoyed the first podcast. Hope all is well with Brian, Lori, and Jay." Love the vlog today with Elvis. And does Mike still have a scar? You know, Mike has a, it, it's way better than oh. I expected. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I saw it the is first time. Is he the one that got nailed today. by the iguana? No. Well, yes, he did that, too. That, that, <laughs> that's that a is what, That's a different scar. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the guy who has cobras <laughs> and copperheads. Oh, no, that's no, no, no. Different, that's one, different, different one. Different one. That's Bruce. That's, that's yeah, Bruce. Bruce. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mike yeah, is now talking. rivaling Bruce in scars. Yeah, squinty eyes. Squinty scars. Squinty eyes. Yeah. But, yeah, so what happened was in it was in today's vlog is we in all our wisdom decided to take elvis the big asian water monitor in my truck to pet smart <laughs> now why we didn't take the reptarium van from the start because we could have had him just sitting in the back that would have made all the sense in the world but we always but, use salt in your truck yeah though. we always do yeah. salt in the and truck elvis so i guess just loves being held and just stays so well yeah we yeah. know that oh god yeah <laughs> no, he was he was like climbing on me he's climbing on the dashboard <laughs> next thing you know he's climbing on mike next thing you know and it was just i mean he just barely put his claw salt's like, going yep. back to indiana in the back of my truck oh yeah oh. salt is <laughs> yeah. She's getting, she may have to she's outgrowing her <laughs> i may not be able to keep her anymore but uh, um but yeah just i mean i when i saw the footage of it I, I was looking at mike when it happened but you know your your mind doesn't record right, you know right, exactly. uh but i remember it going like like him like just getting brushed and then all of a sudden just like he opened his eye blood and boom pouring yeah. blood and uh and so I, when i saw the footage i was like the same way and i as soon as i was saw the tail that got him or no the it was tail? actually it was it's actually the claw. the claw the back claw Ooh. he like he just, swiped like, his he hand just swiped just like this like choo, just barely hit him and then uh and then all of a sudden i looked eyeball yes. yeah by a millimeter i mean yeah. it wasn't much but, and, and then he yeah. um but i looked back there and it just it to me it looked wide open like wide open because yeah, like it a just hot started dog. pouring Split. blood. And I'm like, you're gonna need stitches, man. This is not good at all. But when we got back, it it actually, it, although it bled like crazy, it's one of it, it looked things. okay. Face where it was, really they're, yeah. they're so not thin, gonna do a yeah. stitch right under your yeah. eye. So that's like, why it flapped open too. Yeah. That skin yeah. is so loose. Yeah. So he'll have a, he will have a little scar, it, but it's gonna look yeah, handsome. It, does, it, it looks way better than the first day picture I got. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, oh god. What yeah, I thought for sure. I'm <laughs> this is like, the stuff that happens when I'm not here. Yeah, I'm thinking our our workman's comp is <laughs> going through the roof. <laughs> yeah. I got attacked by a dog. When? Two weeks ago. Two weeks. What kind of dog? You're a dog guy, right? I don't know if the camera can see my hands. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. What, yeah. what what kind of dog was it? What happened? Well, I have a new Havanese puppy, and I'm training her. Mm -hmm. um, She's um, she's gonna be a sniffer dog for me to help locate and count eastern mm -hmm. box turtles. Yes. That's story sick. That's her. awesome. Cool. But anyway, um, long story short, she's a great little dog. I'm trying to teach her heel, and I walk with a cane. Sometimes I have a foot that's messed up, and if my foot's really bad, I have one of those power chairs. And she's walking along beside my power chair, and we go around a corner. And my neighbor, I live in a housing division on a big seven-acre lake. Nice. And around the other side, my neighbor had a small dog, fifteen-pound dog. It's always the small pulling, ones. Pulling on its leash back between her legs. She had her back to the road and he yanked out of her thing and he was a meat missile right oh. after my puppy. Uh. Latched onto my puppy and... Oh, no. Well, how was your dog? Clocked him and punched him off at my dog Good. and he come back and got me right here. Oh, my gosh. How's your dog? It didn't open her skin. Good. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah, we had that happen once. We had a rat terrier, <laughs> and it was a little pistol, too. You know, it was a pistol. And um, we had a, a, a lab down the street. Emphasis on the piss. Oh, it, oh yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, sure enough, it was out front, and the lab down the street 
just rushed it. It just got out. It. But of his but leash. Nah, yeah, it got out. Of his, but in this case, it grabbed her dog and shook shook it around like a rag doll. That's never good. Yeah, and uh, but thankfully it was okay. I mean, it did have to have like tubes put into the bite wounds. It was just and, punctures, yeah. so like it was okay. But yeah, mm-hmm. that was pretty scary to see it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Pretty much, you're just honestly. I you thought his neck was snapped. Yeah, they the can way deglove that, yeah. the entire body yeah. of flesh yeah. there. Yeah, so was, that was terrifying was so, to watch. <laughs> I think uh, his name was Kramer. I think it was the first time Kramer thought he he could admit his match. Yeah, you because know, yes. his whole life he thought he was the big dog <laughs> in the block. <laughs> yeah, they yep. tough for their yes. size. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he was a, he was a pistol. Dogs. I love it. One of the smartest small breeds. Oh my gosh! Yeah, he was the we, best we mouser. Offer, oh my god! Rat finder. There was. Yeah. Oh yeah, when there was a mouse out, he would sit there for hours. He would catch every one yeah. of them. I mean, it was it was good. But he was uh, he was smart. We had him for like seventeen years. Yeah. Wow. You know, before he passed away, and, and, and he passed away with uh, with a lot of vigor. Yeah. You know he he got he got to the point where he just he wouldn't do. He didn't you know. want to go, but he was literally blind and deaf. He like, could even yeah, barely go, walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we go like, in the bathroom anywhere, like you know, like <laughs> just, incontinent. Yeah, yes, yes, incontinent. that's blind, what it, incontinent, exactly. deaf, crippled, but that, happy. Yeah, yeah. but at that point, we're no, he wasn't was happy. Lucky. He wasn't happy. <laughs> he, was, he was miserable his whole life. <laughs> no, he's, he's never happy. happy. Yeah, he, was he was he was really my dog. So like like he would like wait till I went to bed at night to go to bed. He slept in the bed with us and. uh uh, but he would growl at everybody. Like <laughs> anyone that walked into the house, he'd be like, Rrr. but he never tried to really, but I don't think he ever bit anyone. Did he? Uh, I mean, he, nothing bad. He'd have his nips, but then, yeah. you know, but, but yeah, he used to be he'd able to go like to pick his cage, him. but he would tell you all the way how he felt all the way to his <laughs> yeah. cage. Right. Yeah, because yeah, like we because we caged him when we left <laughs> as he got older because he would poop in the house because he got <laughs> so we cage him when we left and you go good, get in cage and he'd be, he just growled the entire way there and bark at you and and then you could pick him up and play him like a flute you know like really like the bagpipes that's awesome it was it was amazing what else we got Chibi says big birds if treated poor are very dangerous I was at a bar and saw a macaw. Uh, so I walked over, he popped on my shoulder, and I gave him love until the bartender saw and turned white. Uh, bore, the bird tore his ear off, yeah. but it liked oh, yeah. me. Yeah. Well, birds are like that, right? They do that. Yeah. I was actually uh, uh, in, in Indonesia, and um, what I always forget the name of the parrot. Uh, oh, it's that red yeah, it's a right. red parrot that's... Uh, Scarlet macaw? No, it's Green not. A, it wasn't a macaw. It was an actual parrot, and... Um, uh, See. darn it! I can't remember Eclectus? the par- Eclectus. Yeah, 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 there yeah, it is. Yeah. Eclectus, exactly. There yeah. it is. Right there. This one, right? I think that was an Eclectus. The females are red and the males are green. Exactly. Nice. Yeah, this was a red Eclectus. And uh, it, uh, I think. You I see it. All I see is a dinosaur. So. No, you're 100 percent right. Female. Females are females are red. Yeah, I remember because it was a female that I had on me. It was real tame, and it literally grabbed my lip. And just, I, I still have video. a scar. I still have a scar on my lip. I mean, it just hey, it didn't like it pierce your lip. It just pierced my lip right <laughs> through my lip and wouldn't let go. And it, the funny thing was, is like the the keeper there was just kind of giggling, <laughs> like it was no big deal, you know. And I and I'm like, geez, I, I literally should have. You know, I'm in Indonesia. I'm not going to do anything, but you know, I should have probably well, gotten a couple stitches. What? Okay, yeah. so what did you do with Mike in the back seat? Well, what did we do with Mike? We no, spit on our finger. Laugh. I spit on our fingers. Okay. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I, no, he, actually, his voice was pretty shaky. He was yeah. pretty upset. Okay. I was, I was worried. And the problem was like Noah is like maybe like you. Like Noah is not very calm under pressure. Like somehow, like this happens, and he just like oh, he was driving. Right? He just yeah, turns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just turns into like I think like it was a Home parking Depot lot, or something. Like, yeah, lot, like yeah. a parking. I'm like, and then then we're over by Gordon Food, and he goes goes. We got to get some 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 bandages. Do you think Gordon Food would have them? I'm like. It's no, I, and I'm like, where are you going? I go, where are you going? And he's like, Ugh. I don't know. And I go, just go back to the shop. You know, he's just like trying to turn into hotels. <laughs> it was like, really great. Like, like, do you have a bandage? He's, he's at Black Rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, geez, he was all panicking and and no, so I didn't laugh at all. You know, okay. we, we, we on the way me. here, we had to drive through Detroit, and we're from a small town, mm-hmm. and I was driving, and I am so neurotic under stress, like. Normally I'm fine and easy going, but and stuff like that I just panic. Yeah, yeah. And my son was like just fidgeting over there, and then I said, "I'm tired of driving. You want to drive for a while?" And we just when we got out of Detroit, and he says, "Okay, but the rules are you're not allowed to talk or panic." Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It gets a little crazy, and it's it, it construction season is terrible too yes. around here. I mean, yeah. it, so yeah. it makes it harder to drive because you're driving with a lot of traffic and. And everything people are driving is, terrible too. Everything yeah. is under c- construction, and but um, well, but, I don't yeah. want to disparage Detroit, but I can remember <laughs> 10, 15 years ago, yeah. 
things were really bad up here. I yeah. used to come up for a tattoo convention every year. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, there's I one mean, still there. Like it's still the rear end of the world. It was, it, you know, I... Then the last yeah. few years, it seems like it's, it's beautiful. coming back. It's yeah. coming back big. I yeah. mean, we're talking like monstrous. I, yeah. Like it, it's one of the. I so just surprised. before COVID, yeah. it was the like the largest rebirth in the entire country, and then COVID hit and it kind of shut it all down because obviously all those people that worked in all those high rise buildings in Detroit no longer worked at the buildings. They all worked at home. A lot of them moved out of the city because they were like, "Hey, I, I don't have to work in the city anymore." Yeah. So, Your like, governor up here was like a code Nazi on all that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yes. Sorry, I'm not. No, 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 no. You're no, you're 100 percent right. Our governor was terrible. Um, yes. Whitler, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what we call yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whitler. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was a weird thing though because it, she was like super strict and then just not super strict. Like, at all. It like, was like it went from like you can't like leave your house almost. It Dude, was almost like I Shanghai. would like to get elected again. Yeah. Exactly. And then it's like, yeah. That's and then exactly it's just like, what just it like, is, but yeah. I yeah, don't think there's any coming back from that. You're not yeah, going to save her from what you not. did. But you yeah. remember, uh, you probably saw it in the news where there was literally a plot to kill her. Yeah. There was a conspiracy. <laughs> oh to yeah. Kill all those her. guys yeah. went to the, <laughs> I don't condone <laughs> violence, but I understand. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understand the passion. Yeah, they, they were it's literally, passion. the conspiracy was they were going to, uh, kidnap her. Take her to the middle of Port Huron, or, or, or the Huron her with masks. No, not even do that. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. Smart, yeah, yeah. smart. But they were just going to tie her up and then leave her in, on oh, a no, raft no. in the middle of the lake, and just let her die out at, and see. You know, that's, that <laughs> that's was incredible. Right now, there are seven people. I believe seven people in jail. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because of this, this, uh, this said act <laughs> that they were trying to do. So Michigan. So, so maybe that caused her to lighten up. But uh, but nevertheless, after COVID, now uh, we're we're just down in Detroit. Uh, ish uh, the other day and um, well no we were we, well, we were, were in Detroit yeah, yeah. well we yeah. were and we then were too. Yeah. right we were and then we but we went into we Detroit, were that we were you know and uh, and it's it's really really getting beautiful, beautiful yeah. down there and in and, and the real estate you know I was talking to Lori's mom where she grew up in the hood Lori did and um, that house was like worth nothing I mean what like ten thousand dollars or something like that when she sold it ten or twelve thousand dollars now that house is like a hundred thousand dollar house wow Gentrific yeah. gentrification is yeah. that what yeah. they call it yeah, yeah 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 it's cool it's really cool to see the city popping off like that so it's uh I love Detroit so I'll always be a Detroit boy well awesome great yeah. beater says you're all beautiful and how is Ivy doing well thank did, you did, did, did Clint did you you saw Ivy right she so she big anaconda Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. looking big, huh? Oh, humongous. so she's so she's gravid. She should be, you know. I if I were gonna we're guess, really excited. Do you want some babies? Because yeah. I'm giving them away. Yeah, any podcast, Not the yes. Anacondas. No, no, oh, come on. They're Take so few. sweet. Though. I'll give you five. <laughs> five. Oh, come on. Every podcast gets one. I'm a garter snake guy. <laughs> a garter well, snake actually, guy. Actually, they're just like chunky garters. Yeah, they both give live fight. birth. It's very similar. <laughs> And they'll always stay that yes. size. Yes. Yeah. If you have a small enclosure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Enclosure. They only enclosure. grow to their enclosure size. That's yeah. my favorite. Yeah. I live on oh, a seven acre it? pond and I have some neighbors I don't oh, like. Oh, yeah. You could just, it would love it in the seven acre pond. <laughs> Speaking of which, why didn't we bust that myth? We should. Well, we want to do another one. So let's yeah, do it. So that's, yeah. Because that, that, that's a great myth. Yeah. Oh right. Gosh, the whole like. And there's so know, many people who still literally believe that. Oh, yeah. Well, even, know, f even, crazy. even fish, that is the really yes. what it's made after yeah. is like fish will only grow to the size of their tank. It's complete rubbish, you know. I mean, it's. <laughs> yeah, fish, talk to Ohio Fish Rescue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. There's lots of. There's a uh, couple of Arapaima that uh, <laughs> yeah. refuse to agree with that. Oh, my God. I there's a that. great book that was just written on Arapaima fish. Really? And how. They're tearing down the rainforest, trying to uh -huh. find the very last few remaining really? wild populations. And they're not doing it to help them. Right. It's because there's big buyers in Hong Kong and New oh, York yeah. that are willing to pay hundreds of thousands of piece for them. And they think there's a theory out there that there's this pocket where this color is. It'll be in the millions. Ugh. And they've done irreparable damage That's to these terrible. little streams. There's, mm. there's so oil stupid. spilled in them, trying to get to the last populations of these oh, rare lungfish. Gosh. Yeah, and you'd think that they would like, that would be like, a, you know, for conservation. Instead, it's just for greed, yeah. which is just a shame, you know, because arapaima are amazing. We're, we'll have, we'll definitely have some arapaima because um, they're just amazing fish, you know. Because they've been in the pet trade for years. You yeah. can yeah, readily get them. And it's all about thing. morphs exactly. and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah but that's, maybe there's one out there that hasn't been seen yet. So yeah. Well, I'll the fish trade is crazy. I mean, look at the koi stuff. I mean, the koi stuff is just outrageous. You know, oh, some God. of these guys will pay, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. for one fish at least with those they don't exist in the wild and you yeah, don't have yeah. to go out after yeah, them and yeah. destroy 
No, it is true. They are amazing. I've seen, yeah. I saw one that was a million dollar koi once. Sheesh, oh, peace. I just saw an Insta, uh, actually it was on TikTok, yeah. this koi that was like so fat. It was literally like the size of ivy. <laughs> like a Pokemon. It was like yeah, the yeah, size yeah. of ivy fat. And uh, and this guy just like picks it up to put it in another thing. No and way. It, wow. I mean, it's, it looks like, it's like the size of one of our dogs. Wow. Is it's, he just feeding it a lot or is it like old? And I, I think it, I mean, this, I, it, I didn't, it was, it was a Japanese oh. TikTok. TikTok so yeah. I don't know what was really going on there, but it looked like it was like. They one eat of those. so much. I imagine they could get fat, right? Yeah. Like, do they ever not eat? Why don't you look up, <laughs> yeah. look up really they quick, like stop. giant, right. look up giant koi fish. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, it, it'll probably come up. It's it's crazy how big they can they can get. I've kept in bread exotic. <laughs> yeah, look at these things, <laughs> dude. Look at this. Wait a second. That's wait a second. That one has to be fake. Which that's one? Real. This the one here? One, no, the where would the guys in front of it? This one here? Like down, 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 green background. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's horse yeah. perspective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's that's like a, that's like an arf thumbnail. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That looks like if we got koi fish, that's right. what the video is gonna look like. Yeah. Brian's new koi fish. <laughs> look at there's a whole series of them though. They're, these they're are actually like, really great. <laughs> That's hilarious. I really like these. Look at that, yeah. This oh, has to be from a game. We're, we're definitely getting Yeah, this is from a game. We're, we're definitely the doing that. Like when we do when we add our koi pond to With the our new expansion, it will just be one. But look giant at this guy's fish. fish. I mean, the, yeah. the fish that I looked at was even bigger yeah, than this. Yeah. But I mean, well, and see, you can I'm see how. To that, I said, if I was doing Brian's doing adding fish, I would do all koi and exotic goldfish, oh. and nobody would think it was cool, but me probably. <laughs> mm. No, I think it's cool. But you can see to the right here. Like just you know, like you know, all these pictures down here, like how big these koi fish are. It's insane. You know They're I mean? just wonderful pets. That's what people don't realize. Look at this. I think it said is it, no. I'll go back. Oh, go, that one go looks back fat. for a second. <laughs> no, uh, go down right there. That Dude, click on that one. This one is that yeah. George from uh, Aquashella? Yeah, that's George from Aquashella. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that that's that's a fake fun thumbnail too. So well, that's good. But that's a good thumbnail. It is. It's nice. How many views did that one get? One point. One point six eight. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's why it's a good thumbnail. Good thumbnail. <laughs> It turns out the background works. could have been better, but yeah, it could have been a blue okay, sky. <laughs> <You know? laughs> this isn't a thumbnail. <laughs> we talk about thumbnails a lot around here these days. You know, it's a lot. What does Tiffany have to say? She says, "Hey, fam, great to see Laura." Oh, I, the yeah, I've been waiting again. for this one. I've been waiting for this one. Also, Sizzy has shed, and Kizzy is growing in the egg nicely. Soon, I will have. Lizzie, Fizzy, Sizzy, Mizzy, Jizzy, and Kizzy, much love. Exactly. I mean, she told Tiffany, me she was going to There help. was one in there that I think shouldn't be in exactly. there. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So what kind of snake is Jizzy? Yeah. Yeah. It's, a blue, it's a blue-eyed Lucy, I think so. Oh, boy. I can't laugh at that we've on got camera. A, we've got a reverend, no one in, knows. We've got a reverend no. in the house. Just behave yourself, Tiffany. Yeah. Jeez, oh, Pete, you're embarrassing me now. And then Heidi says, uh, Lori, ship the anacondas to South Africa. We have a huge demand for them. Top dollar. All right. Oh. Oh, oh no! no. Yeah. <laughs> you can see Brian get nervous. Oh, no. <laughs> Look at Brian get nervous. I'll start the paperwork. I do know how to export. <laughs> oh my gosh! There they go, yeah, Brian. We, we haven't exported Top in a long dollar. time. Haven't even gotten here yet, and they're gone. <laughs> there, yeah, no. Great beers. Yeah, let, let's let's have babies before we sell them or get rid of them. Okay. Well, I can't ship them until they're born, so it's good. I know, but let's not. We'll, we'll wait for a couple months after yeah, they're born. Talk to me, Heidi. And a corridor. <laughs> and a corridor. you got to be there. And a corridor. That's a good idea. No, it it's is. not. Smart. It's a really dumb idea. Uh, I do. I, I was thinking about this. <laughs> hey, so, up there with Hi area. to all my friends. I see you down here in the regular chats. Everybody's like, yeah, it's the guy we talk to all the time. Yeah. 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 It's, good. it's always, it's, the chat's always Chat cool. gang like says it. hi for sure. Yeah, they're awesome. always good. So what's uh? Great Beater uh, says, uh, what happens if Ivy gives stillbirth? Oh, let's not talk about it. Please, I mean, no, please, it no. Happens. It can happen. It can certainly happen. Yeah. And I'm certainly nervous about it. Until, that's why I'm saying until Versus you have Cobra babies. We'll have a meal. And it oh, will go on yeah. and hopefully oh, she'll gosh. have more. Yeah, I hope so. But let's hope she has good babies. I mean, it'll be, be it'll be really, really disappointing if she doesn't. I mean, listen, um, that is just part of working with animals. How many disappointments yeah. have we had yeah. over our years? A lot. Yeah. You know? I don't know enough people that have bred anacondas to, to have like, true statistics so so when you have like a gravid boa you have a very high probability of stillborns right. or, or, sure. or slugs or something like that but all the anaconda people i know that have bred them kept mccurley you know i know jay prehistoric has bred yellows we used to breed yellows um i don't i don't i don't think i've seen anyone have bad litters yeah 
Yeah, huh. I mean, you yeah. just yeah. it's Live always helpful nice, though. to have yeah. a male like that always helps That's with true. having viable offspring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we had what we had we had well, we had a baby without, without even a male. Without it wasn't a male. viable. That's no, yeah, yeah, it died after a couple of weeks, unfortunately. Right. I mean, it was yeah. amazing yeah. Yeah. that it even happened. I um I don't know enough about snakes to know the answer to this, but can a female snake retain sperm like a turtle can? Absolutely, they can they can go for years and years and years. They can retain sperm. Yeah, I know a box um, turtle can go seven to eleven. They aren't sure. You yeah. Know yeah, it's, and it's always difficult, right? Because like there has been some zoos that have had. We don't know if they're parthenogenic or they're they're you know actually fathered. Well, I guess you could know. I don't know the story behind it because if they the were all females, yeah. If you, well, yeah. Or if you have all females, you know it's partho. Yeah. If it's male, if you have a male in the clutch, it can't be parthenogenic. So, um, so I don't know. But there's, I think that there was a, a ball python that was alone, had been in with a cage with a male, and then there was like 18 years in between clutches. Wow. And she had a fertile clutch. Like eighteen years later, and I'm I'm assuming that that clutch probably wasn't. I don't know that. And it was boys yeah. and girls both, so they knew. I think that's what the story was, but I don't know a hundred percent. But that's it's, I know I remember reading the story like you know female retained sperm for eighteen years, you know. So, wow. so yeah. and you know over the years with all the ball python craze, like that was part of sometimes the problem. If you bred one male one year and then the different year switched it up, but then you people get split clutches. Yeah, yeah, we've had, like yeah, we have that almost that every year. That didn't make sense, but if you look back, like, oh, wait, so oh, these babies yeah. came from this male last year and then these ones from this year, so. Yeah, dual you father clutch. Like yep. a genetic swab or something to verify. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you, yeah, if you want, you could probably do that. Uh, but for us, we just know genetically if you like bred yeah. this male the one year, this male the next year, and you get a combination of the litters, you're like, oh, okay. Got yeah. some retention of sperm from last year and some, you know, some good record from keeping years, is yeah. important. Yeah, and we we, yes, we always helps. keep records <laughs> yeah. and stuff, so it's good. But uh, uh, so how's I mean, how's everything else going for you? I mean, it's been a, been a while since we've chatted too much, and life is good. Life's good. Um, I keep myself pretty busy, and my kids are growing. My son's. Uh, yeah, your son's pretty growing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think <laughs> he better be done. He tall. better be done. <laughs> I swear. Yeah, if he grows anymore, he can't fit in the basement. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's the same size as me, pretty much. He yeah. looks just. You guys I'm look identical. Totally six eight, six yeah. eight. I know you're, and the ceiling is six nine. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you literally, you, you, you're, you're, you're right there. Right? You don't want to walk through the lights. Let me just tell you that much. <laughs> you're going to get a dink in the head. But, yeah, uh, he graduated. He graduated from uh, electrician school. And since congratulations. I was here last and. Uh, my daughter is going to college in the fall. She's a high school senior this year. So. Oh, wow. Good. So you're going to be done with that well, whole that's school good. thing. Actually, I got a few things I can use them for next door. Good. Electrician. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we could always use a good electrician. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, we, he's doing his first year of some, kind of like an apprenticeship okay, sort gotcha. of thing. He's enjoying nice. that. Good. Now, is he into reptiles or? Both of my kids are into animals in general, but I don't think either of them cares much for reptiles. Okay. I mean, I think Ethan thought today there was some really cool stuff here. Okay, cool. But your sloth, he thought, was amazing. Yes, especially. yeah, yeah. How we like our kids. Like, yeah. You yeah. know, where they're very animal-loving people, yeah. but neither have your crazy And yeah, neither have the passion. Yep. Uh, Noah seems Noah's to like, like closer, growing yeah. towards it. Like every, you know, like I think Noah is, is actually really appreciates the animals now yeah. that, that, that he didn't. And that's only, you know, I mean, he's always liked them, but, but like, he's never been like passionate about it. Whereas now, like he's well, like a year pretty, and a half. He's been yeah, like, like last year and a half. He'll like walk around and be like, Oh, this is so cool. Or yeah. you know, we get some, you know, so, so he's it's definitely cool. not afraid of him. Like he interacts <laughs> with them and he's stuff great. Like that. Yeah. No. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah. He's always a trip with them. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> we had, we had, some fun today he got ripped up by uh by the albino did he on, did he yeah a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> always and cracks me up oh always he's so funny me up at, with what he does online and stuff he's always cracking me he's up. a funny kid you know and i love it and i think you know him the, him and the mic him and mike are a great the team. mic the, the, the mic. mic him and, him the, and the, mic. the mic yeah him and the mic i watched Squinty a eyes. video recently where you were locking your heads <laughs> into the box. so yeah. good which and is probably one of the most dangerous things yeah, we've done in a going down time. the stairs with it yeah i don't remember if it was my son or my roommate or something but i was looking at this and over my shoulder i heard what the hell <laughs> what are you watching is this what you're into yeah, <laughs> you know? kind of crazy stuff you went to there reverend <laughs> give me a few minutes for context yeah, 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 gotcha. yeah. yeah but uh the thing is, is and it's not that people weren't wrong some people made a comment and they're not wrong because like you said we we're locked in here and we like walked down the stairs at one point we walked you 
in the th- dude. It was yeah. so oh, yeah. good. Laura, Laura doesn't watch, watch it. it. That is so, so, so dangerous. You, they walk you down, down the stairs. stairs yeah, yeah. To why? BHP, you to the dungeon. Fell. You would have fell. You would have broke your neck. Both yeah. of you yeah. would have been dead. No, 100%. like why? So it wasn't. We didn't do it like you could have had a animal coffins. <laughs> we we didn't have like a, a animal head in the box. It was like you put your head in the box and then you do things like you feed Elvis. We had to. So good, Laura. We went to. Stupid idea. It was mine. It was my idea. Mr. Bronze. My idea. But it's a really good one. You should see so, uh, it. Yeah, we, we sent them over to Bill and Sally's oh. to get ice cream. <laughs> so they had to walk. So good, Lori. <laughs> Try to get through the door. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. No, walks in. <laughs> and in his Michigan accents, it was funny. He's just like, hey, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> like, nothing, like nothing's wrong. Like it's just another oh, day. Trust me, those guys next door. We're here door. for slushies. <laughs> Those Whatever it was. Yeah, those guys. How did, they probably just were like, hey, oh, how are yeah, you doing? Yeah. Like, played it off. Well, they were like, ice cream great. time? They are great. They didn't flinch. They're like, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> no, Bill and Sally are, we've got them down where they don't, they're never surprised at They've anything we do. They've seen a thing or two. Yeah. We, we show up and. and Afterwards, they're sometimes like, Sometimes I the wonder, hell? does somebody go over there and warn them? No, no, no. no. <laughs> we want reaction. I mean, we go in there with like bunnies, costumes on. <laughs> rainbow suits. Yeah, rainbow suit. Yeah, the one time we had Noah and Mike both in rainbow suits. It was great. Together. Oh for Easter. Came in for Easter. I, I said they were Easter. You said they were gay pride shoes. Well, but, uh, you know, yeah. I say they're Easter no, shoes. No, it's not Easter. No, it. Yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> Reverend says it's all right. I I'm wondered where the parade was. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. He's risen. Yeah. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> <He> ain't wrong. <laughs> All right. With that being said, what someone said something about Animal Con in here. What Somebody was say? just looking to see where some information with uh, Animal Con. Tiffany right away gave them the link. Yeah, so. Animal Con dot Animal Con USA dot com. Yeah, right there. Uh, please, you know, we we're we're going to be making a gigantic push here in the next week, week and a half, and it's uh, you know, listen, it's it's a scary thing, right? And I. Clint, have you heard about, you know, what we're doing, a, an, an it's called Animal yeah. Con. So it's, it's you know, going to be an animal, you know, event with all the animal personalities. Like influencers. Um, influencers and creators that, that are, you know, in the, in the TikTok space, YouTube space, some television people like Forrest Galante. We talked about, you know, the, the parrots uh, that, that uh, um, they thought were extinct, like our friend Forrest cool. Galante. Like him. Yeah, Forrest Galante will be coming. You know, he he's, he used to do Extinct or Alive, which is still, I think, his real passion. Now he's got another show called, like, Mysterious Creatures or yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I almost had a heart attack at the Zanzibar Leopard episode. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's a good, yeah. <sighs> yeah, yeah. He's a good guy, man. And so, you know, I've known Forrest for quite some time, and, and uh, I was just on his podcast just a, a month and a half or so ago, and then he was just in Papua New Guinea uh, just over the last couple of weeks and got a nasty spider bite Oof. that, like, put him down for a few days. I mean, he had a gigantic necrotic, you know, Yuck. thing on his leg. It's uh, looking pretty bad. But uh, I, I loved following his stories when he did have Wi-Fi um, because it was— Watching the— Red? Not not so much the, the, <laughs> he the was, spider. He, he did a live. Yeah. He yeah, did IG so much, live. Not so much the spider part, but the uh, uh, the the part of uh, you know just being in Papua New Guinea and so because he 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 goes crazy. You know he goes into the bush. You know I mean it's you know he goes yeah. he goes into areas that most people don't go into and and some of the stories like stuff he hasn't been able to tell on the episodes. Oh. I've seen him on podcasts before. Oh yeah. Like, amazing some of the terrible stuff they've had to deal with oh my gosh yeah it's uh you know uh, you know it's funny um what was it that was it i don't know if it was for it was forest actually so forest was like in mozambique or something like that <clears throat> and uh th- it was absolutely forest because i was following his stories this is like last year he was filming for animal planet and he was like in mozambique and like some drug lords thought that they were filming trying to, or it wasn't even, okay, so it even got better than this. It wasn't the drug lords. It was the government thought, it's like the government was like killing people. You know what I mean? Like it was a, one of those type of situations. And uh, they thought he was trying to do it. So they, they, they sent it like military to go get him. No. And they got like, they literally were like, he was telling this story like, it's three o'clock in the morning. We just got word. The military's on their way. They're arresting us, you know, for, for being traitors. And we don't know what's going to happen. They're going to confiscate all our stuff. We're, they were literally gotten to boats, like speed boats, had to go like a three hour boat ride to get to like a private airstrip where like Animal Planet had sent a plane. And they finally, and I remember his story was like, okay, we're at the air thing, but we're still not out of the country. Until we're out of the country, we're not safe. 
and that never got on the TV at all. That was just on his his, his Whoa, story awesome, of like though. you know it's so it wasn't what like a fake. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, thing. yeah, of course. Yeah, you yeah. could see how panicked he was. I mean, like literally, could you imagine a government of an African country <laughs> no, like can't. coming after you? You know, you were gonna die. You were gonna get yeah. killed. You know, you were yeah. gonna be like murked for sure. You have sure. no rights. You have no anything. Yeah. So that's that's scary when you you get into those situations. I, I'll have to add. I'm I'll, I'll get him so on. So I'd the like podcast to travel, sometime. but I don't want to travel like that. Yeah. No? Uh, no. Like, I like exciting things, but that's a little bit much. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. You done much traveling? Not a lot. I've been to the Bahamas and been all over the U.S., um, but no, I haven't traveled internationally much. Is there anything you'd like to do? Ireland would be cool. Yes. Is that where you're from? Uh, no, my no, people are German. He's from Indiana. Oh, German. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I meant your people. <laughs> your, your people. Did you not listen to what he said? Yeah, I mean, what, what, Indiana's not in Scotland? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought, I thought Ireland? Indiana, Ireland. <laughs> what? Yeah. I thought that, uh, yeah, Belfast, yeah. Indiana. <laughs> uh, so, it's so, very so, assuming, so, Ryan. So, I know. So, so why Ireland then? Beautiful. Just yeah. beautiful. Just yeah. what I see on on TV and yes. different travel shows. I used to love to watch uh, Anthony Bourdain, especially. Oh, he's yes. huge! Yeah, yeah. He was I was a, a, I was a big fan of his. Yeah, I was yeah, a fan since really the beginning. Yeah, I mean that, that was a hard thing, you know. I mean, I think that you know, um, as someone that's dealt with anxiety and, and mental health issues, you know, when you see someone lose that battle like that, it, it's it's hard. You know, it, it, yeah. it kind of hits you, especially when people would assume. Uh, and it's a it's a terrible assumption um, that you know someone like Anthony Bourdain has everything that a person could want you know right. fame sure. money I mean, hey, everything Robin restaurants Williams. you know yeah. well, that, right. right and that happened very yeah. similar it was yep. it was really one after each other yeah. you know it was like two people now it made me feel a little bit better not that, obviously I loved Robin Williams and I don't mean this like I was happy he died it did make me feel a little better when I found out it was like a, a brain degenerative disorder and not a mental health disorder yeah. although I heard he had dealt with depression throughout his life. Uh, which I find very interesting that a lot mm. of comics have that issue, right? Yeah, well, yeah. he's an alcoholic too, and he likes cocaine, but he had been All clean right. for some years. Right, yeah. So, but that can mess your brain chemistry up too, yeah. you know, forever. So, um, but when when I heard that there was like a brain, then you start going like, okay, well, I just don't like. I hate when people lose the battle to mental health. It, yeah. it, it just is like, it makes me sad because... Worse, you know, too it's, often, it's, too. Yeah, oh my gosh, way too often. And, and then again, when you have someone like an Anthony Bourdain, I didn't never, I've never met Anthony, I didn't have any connection with him whatsoever, but I was just, a, <clears throat> you know, I, I followed his film crew online, and yeah. you know, so, so uh, you know, they Amazing. were... Amazing. Oh my Amazing gosh, Amazing yeah. work. Each episode was like a, a professional documentary. Yeah. And he did all that. Yeah. You know, I mean, he did all that narration and all that... Yeah. No, it was, it, was, it was really, Brilliant. it's very few people that can make you feel like you're in the room with them. Yeah. You know, and that's what he did, right? Like you felt like you were traveling with him. He yeah. was, he was, you could really feel, and he told that story through, you know, <laughs> strangely enough, alcohol uh, <laughs> and, and, and food, right? Yeah. You know, that was his yeah. thing, you know, drinking and, and eating. And that was how he told the story mm. of cultures. And it was really beautiful. amazing. And I, I remember like after he died, you know, I had several conversations with networks about different things and. And, and they were, you know, always saying, like, all we get pitched now is, like, you know, well, this is going to be the next Anthony Bourdain. And they're like, there's never going to... It's kind of like when Steve Irwin died. I was died. just going right. to say you that, know, There's yeah. never going to be another Steve Irwin. There's never going to be another... Elvis. Yeah. 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 Yep. There, so speaking of Elvis, do you see there's a movie coming out about that? Yeah. That yeah. looks great. Yeah. And, and the colonel is supposedly going to play a big part in that. His weirdo manager. Really? Yeah. Tom Hanks. I right, saw yeah. that. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah. Tom Hanks is amazing too. Like the yeah, guy does everything. It. it looked nothing like it. <laughs> no. Mean, yeah. yeah. Blubbered yep. up. Yeah. Like, Whoa. Yeah. I didn't know if he like. I was Same. like, God, Tom's not actually in very good shape these days. <laughs> <laughs> He's really taking this role seriously. All well, these roles. He's the kind of guy, honestly, that probably would do whatever it took to do. You know, to get into it. You're too. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, so. you figure, look at what he, how much weight he lost for Castaway, oh, right? Gosh, you yeah. know, I mean, he. You know, he's a pretty serious guy, but I think at his age, it's dangerous to gain 30, 40 pounds, oh, you yeah. know, cause yeah. it's hard to lose it afterwards. You know, Absolutely. when you're younger, maybe you do a little bit better, but, uh, so I know you're a turtle guy uh, you're an animal guy, but you love turtles yeah. and, and you were super stoked to, to see our albino box turtle. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't he cute? He's I'm, so I'm a box feisty. turtle nerd. I can't help it. <laughs> okay. If you, if you're honest and you look at all the turtles and tortoises in the world and a box turtle is a turtle. But it's right, kind of like not, a marshy it's tortoise. All tur so it's what is, what is it? What's the saying? Hang on a second. I'm sorry to interrupt you. It's 
all tortoises are turtles, but not all turtles, turtles are tortoises, tortoise, yes. or, or something like that. I think that, you're right. Is that you're the right. Is that the that's, same? That's what yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. And they're amazing, amazing. And back in the '90s, probably uh, I had heard '80s or '90s. I had heard there was one alive, an mm -hmm. albino mm -hmm. alive somewhere, and they were going to try to breed it. But I don't think that ever went anywhere. Yeah. And then I just heard a couple years ago that there were just a handful in the yep. world, and somebody was trying to put together a breeding program. Yeah, I don't think anyone's actually produced <clears throat> the easterns. I think that there's, um, there has been. Uh, ornate albino and ornates and three yeah, i think maybe the three toes were the ones that were actually albinos that someone has produced maybe like very very small numbers but the easterns to my to my knowledge i think there's only two or three easterns in the world um for me albinos. it's exciting because of that shell pattern they develop with age yeah you wonder how will that express itself with in time the sure. yeah. compare an eastern box turtle to everything a male now and a mature yeah. adult male yeah. i think it's the most beautiful turtle yeah. or tortoise in the world with all that flashy yeah, orange yeah. on the skin and face and the red yeah. eyes. Yeah, and they're and they're also some of the most personable turtles too, you know. Yeah. I mean oh, they yeah, really he's are, hysterical. You know, like we yeah. talked about yeah. Well it was funny. I got a video uh that that you know we'll probably post on Instagram sometime uh of it it like I'm just holding it and it's just like biting at the air. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, the kunk, best. Kunk, it's kunk, so kunk. feasty. I know. Just, Do you ever watch Mike feed it? It's like, adorable. It's so yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah, he's just like, <laughs> like reaching eat. for the worms. Yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> I've never <laughs> seen I mean I held the little guy and he's like <laughs> Where is my tree? Where is, yeah, where, where is my much, food at? Yeah. When we bought it, I was so afraid. Oh, like yeah. like we bought it and it came in and I was just like terrified because it yeah. was like For I, I thought that maybe it was going to be about the size it is now mm -hmm. when we got it and it was a third. It was five grams. Yeah. yeah. Now it's fifteen grams, well, so it's tripled its size. Kudos to Mike because yeah. Mike Mike's worked goes, hard. On yeah, it, yeah, above and beyond. That's and something he, we yeah, should tell everybody so listening. Good. An Eastern box turtle makes a horrible pet reptile if you're not extremely experienced. Yeah, yeah yeah you do yeah number one they need humidity and they need a lot of water yeah. that's what people yeah. don't understand they think of it oh it's a tortoise you know keep yeah. it in a desert type of yeah, it very garden. moist and, and when they're yeah. babies they're almost completely carnivorous right yep yeah exactly and as they age that's the biggest reason they get sick in captivity as they age even an adult is probably 60 70 percent meat Right, exactly. Which is weird, right? Yeah, exactly. And but you do have to give them vegetation too, oh, yeah. which or, or you're in trouble. And that's where, you know so we're we're learning as well. And thankfully when, when you know Chris came out from Garden State, they talked a lot to us about, you know, what we're doing and, and they're great people and obviously babies like earthworms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, no, they love that. That's all that's <laughs> basically all he wants to eat is earthworms, yeah. So uh but we, we, we also, you know, uh give them some some different variety as well just here and there but but earthworms are by far his favorite we He'll had a, a report our our indiana dnr puts out a, a pamphlet every year to tell you about the hunting and fishing seasons mm -hmm. and rules will be and there's reptile information different pertinent things in there each year but that there was something in there about the box turtle this past year and i and i've always been a fan but it got me to go and look at their website and reading and Right now, the numbers in Indiana, like here in Michigan, is completely protected. Right, yeah. Uh, and and in Indiana, we're moving in a direction, right, you know, where we don't know how many are left. Oh, know? really? Uh, I think they're they're considering them a species of concern or threatened. Yeah. But I think if we really get out, this is why I think it's so important. There's a guy in the Carolinas that's raising sniffer dogs. Okay. He has these... Uh, a Boykin Spaniels, and he never trained them to do this. One day they're out in the woods, and his Spaniel brought him a box turtle in her mouth. Wow. Wow. That's they're awesome. a soft mouth retrieving right, yeah. so it didn't hurt it. Yeah. So that's when he got the idea. And he called the state's DNR and said, Hey, could we work together and do some count? They, anyway, they did a bunch of projects. Mm -hmm. Their numbers are not in trouble there because that's sort of Good. like the apex of their. Right. That's why their name is Terrapine Carolina, Carolina. Right. Yeah. So, but. As you get further to the west, which it should be abundant, clear to the Mississippi River, but it's not. And in right. Indiana, I have I used to see two or three every year. Right, I go explore everywhere, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen one in the wild in twenty yeah. years. Wow, I haven't I haven't ever seen one in Michigan. I know that they can. They're you know from the area. They can be here. I don't know exactly even where they're from in Michigan, but there's I've never seen, and I've been out herping since I was a kid, sure. I've never seen a box turtle in Michigan, you know, again, very small range in Michigan, but I don't know what the, I, 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 like you said, most, most anything like that, you know, whether it's the, you know, spotted turtles, Blanding's turtles, box turtles, yeah. you know, they're all protected here in Michigan. Yeah. You know, and I Indiana's think painted turtles that way. Yeah. 
you know, I started a group on Facebook a few weeks ago because I had this on my heart and just as such a passion, such a beautiful part of my childhood to remember finding these yeah, things and of find them on the road. And then your parents teach you to help them over to the other side yeah. without getting hurt. And, yeah. You know, it was just really cool experience. And they say that turtles are the first line of defense to know when an ecosystem is in trouble. Like, like litmus paper. Yeah. yeah. Well, all yeah. reptiles, really frogs, yeah, yeah, turtles, amphibians, yeah, frogs are very much that way. Yeah. And, uh, so I thought, well, I'm going to start something for the box turtle. So I started, uh, an, an organization club to help these, the, in, the box turtles in Indiana mission statement, everything. Well, within a few weeks, the longer I got that up, people were calling me and talking to me about other species of turtles that oh, okay. they're running into and having trouble down there. So I just changed the group's name to the hurdle, <laughs> hurdle, the hurdle. The Hoosier <laughs> I like Turtle it. Coalition. Nice. nice. Good. Hoosier Turtle Coalition. So go show that some love. The Hoosier Turtle Coalition. Yep. And we're on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, I think. That's awesome. And, and now what's the, the mission statement you said? Basically, what we want to do, we focus exclusively on natives. We're the only turtle group in the state that only is interested in focusing on our natives. Okay. Good. Um, you know, not really encouraging breeders to develop morphs unless it's just for a hobby. Sure. But we do want to encourage people to start building captive populations because even though our DNR is not, you know, really keen on wild releases at this point in time, It'd be cool to have some colonies ready yeah, in some captivity. Arcs, yeah, some arcs, just in and, case. Yeah. Uh, so that there's already something there in, in the hands awesome, of dude. experienced sure. keepers. Things yeah. like, uh, well, just using the box turtle as an example, keeping that in captivity is not a beginner's deal. Right. But then there are other ones that are relatively easy, you know, painted turtles yeah. and, you know, red-eared sliders. Sure. Uh, but basically, we want to start looking at things that are in trouble and seeing what we can do to help. Sure. Put together some education. I was a school teacher for a long time. So put together, you know, some presentations. I can go into maybe some elementary schools and talk to yeah. the kids and uh, and do it. I Most of what I plan to do is online education online. Sure. And, and uh, well, that's good. Hopefully I, mean, that's, I can help. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's what, awesome. And, and everybody, I mean, we need a lot of, you know, on that macro level, right? Because the problem is, is that, you know, you have a lot of national groups, you know, obviously yeah. turf, turtle, the, what? Turtle conserv conservancy what? Yeah. was it tur survival. <laughs> no, turtle survival no turtle survival tur turtle and what is it There's TSA a turtle survival TS group or something yeah. like that TSA is Follow what they're them. called T Wait, turtle really? survival turtle something alliance like. A lot, maybe a lot. I don't know what it is. I, I, I mean, the turtle people are going to hate me for not yeah. knowing. Like, it. idiot. It's like, I'm God. a turtle guy and I can't turtly remember. Turtly for the turtle club? Yeah, you're turtle not turtly yeah. enough for the turtle club. But, that, but that's <laughs> like, that. I mean, like, yeah, that's obviously, movie. Chris is all about that. And, and Russ Gurley and all those guys are in the, yeah. the turtle conservation yeah. something. Garden or State Tortoise is really good. Yeah, uh, they're great. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. yeah. They're, um, they're amazing. I, I watch them on YouTube a lot. But uh, we just thought, you know, there's all these animals in the pet trade that are great. And believe me, I'm an animal guy. I like them. I like morphs. I'm an albino nerd. I love albino stuff. Um, but like if you live in northeast Indiana and you just have, you're raising the species that live in northeast Indiana, yeah. sometimes it can feel a little boring. Sure. Um, but I enjoy it. I think I it's mean, awesome. Yeah. Not so many people realize that a garter snake is rear fang venomous. Right. And so if you have an allergy to that, you could yeah. actually be in a little bit of trouble with yeah, that. Yeah. Dingo but, would die. Yeah. Like <laughs> Speaking of which, he oh was just gosh. in here before, yeah, too. Was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> Great Peter said, Dingo, love you, just so oh, you know. Oh, okay. Uh, I was wondering why. Yeah, but he was. Uh, some, Dingo, if there he is. Yeah, yeah. Dingo's yeah. still here. <laughs> Dingo, <laughs> where you at, Mike? You're still here. Don't pick up our garter snakes. <laughs> yeah. You're going to get in trouble there. <laughs> yeah, Dingo. He's having His accent. It just kills me. It's great, isn't it? It makes me giggle. He's got an infectious uh enthusiasm yeah that i like ever since he's been gone i've been a little bit bummed out yeah you know, I, I've been, I mean? like, you know how many times i've said tougher than woodpecker lips i yeah. mean every day dude <laughs> I, I just i wish he was like lived down the street that's what i was thinking he so would cool, be a cool man. neighbor to have a burger yeah, with him yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly i mean he yeah as long as he l kept the venomous stuff in his yard yeah, yeah. but they have it right. i mean what a dream vacation you know they just were at disney yeah, yeah. so they were at disney know, for yep, they went I to all they were crushing at disney too they're just doing everything i mean they're they doing it right like we we do it wrong we're, like when we go to florida I we're agree. like there's got to be three videos shoot a day we got to travel from i from, agree from, we got to travel from tampa My, to homestead back over back to, to miami and then yeah. over to miami yeah i gotta go to uh, Miami. yeah but uh um speaking of turtle guy really cool turtle guy we went to visit in florida it was uh do you follow uh the uh turtle uh, uh florida iguana tortoise, tortoise. Right? 
Uh, uh, Sam from Turtle, Laguana, and Tortoise. No, but you I'm should. Familiar. I'm familiar with. You I've should. seen. I think some. Sam's on YouTube. awesome. You'll love. You'd love. You him. know, it's it's interesting. You know, like <laughs> I was watching some of his Instagram stuff the other day, and like when you meet Sam. First off, I, I did. Did you ever hear the story about a direction story to his place? No. <laughs> this is my favorite. So I'm in I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. We're visiting uh, GB Iguana. Uh, that was right, right? Uh, GBL. I think, GBL, right? GBL. Yeah, Iguana. GBL Iguana. And uh, we're visiting them, and he was like, "Hey, you should go to see Sam from Iguana and Taurus." I was like, "Yeah, I know of him, but I don't I don't have a contact." He goes, "Let me text him and, and get, get you guys in touch." And I was like, "That sounds great," you know. And so, you know, I text him, and he's like, "Yeah, Brian, love to have you," you know. I'm go, and I go, "All right, well, cool." I go, "Where where exactly are you from?" And he goes, uh, "He texts back, and he goes, do you know where Tampa is?'" And I was like, of course I know where Tampa. He goes, <laughs> and his response is, oh, well, I'm nowhere near that. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Okay. Dude, it was so good. I liked him right off. Yeah, the right off the rip, you know. And he he wasn't kidding. He was about 300 miles away from Tampa. Yeah, he's so, so far. So what a great uh, he way was to South enter. Florida, what? but uh, but he has some amazing things. But my point was, is that when you meet him, he's very old school, and uh, but very knowledgeable. The thing I loved about Sam is like. He's not a guy like, like, I want to know everything about everything. You know, I'm like interested in reptiles. I'm interested in dinosaurs. I love fish. I love birds. I love, you know, dogs. You know, uh, by the way, I, did you see Max's story of the baby wolves? Max who, Strong? Strong. No, I didn't oh. see it, but I'm jealous already. Oh. I'm about to look it Forget up. Forget about it, man. It's, uh, so uh, our awesome. a guy from uh, Big Cat Habitat. Oh, got yeah, a yeah, of, yeah. Got a, obviously no, got, got, got a got... bunch of baby wolves. So Maria, we gotta go. We gotta go. Yeah. But anyways, my point is, is that Sam is more (laughs) like a guy that's like, I know tortoises and I know iguanas and I don't need to know anything else, you know? And I'm sure he's very knowledgeable about other things, but he is uber knowledgeable about tortoises and iguanas. But he seems very... He has like aldabras. Yes. Yeah, lots. Yeah, yeah, lots. I've watched some of his videos. Yeah. But my point was, is that I was watching his Instagram and kind of for that old school, like he kind of gets it the the social media side. Oh like yeah, I was he watching does. some of his videos, going like, "This is pretty good." You no, know? they're great. You know, it's pretty good for a guy that yeah. doesn't. You wouldn't think he'd even know how to use a cell phone. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, and cool. I, I don't mean disparaging remarks about Sam. <laughs> I'm just saying. He's I just, get what you're saying, though. Yeah, like yeah. like he's 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 got an interesting knack. Like I mean, the other day he followed like these tortoises, obviously. Um, you know, like made tracks, like going around, you know, and it almost looked like there was like a four wheel drive, like what? in his back of his, yard. No way. It was, and so he follows the whole tracks to the tortoises wow. and here's the tortoises. It's just kind of a great of, video. It was yeah. just like a really good video. Like what left these tortoises, what left these tracks? And I literally was like, oh, he must be doing some construction and using some four wheelers or something. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out it's a giant it's tortoise. Just ate off. I don't know if it was on his channel or, but I had I had seen it on National Geographic I think recently, but I think he may have discussed it on his channel or something. Anyway, they they think now that it's possible some Galapagos may take meat. Wow! Oh yeah, we birds. were talking yeah, about yeah. that. We were talking they about smash He's, birds. With yeah, birds. finches. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, finches. They they actually yeah. will smash finches and eat finches. I mean, I believe it. Yeah, they're opportunistic. Because exactly, yeah. I think so. Now, is it their maybe go to? No, but right. I if it feel lands like, on their face, I they're feel eating like it. Matilda yeah. would eat almost anything. That yeah, I think I think they yeah. well, they do something that's called finching to, yeah. to start with, and finching is like when when Adolf was like statuing, posturing yeah. up, statuing up. They call that finching <laughs> because what happens is they go up in the air and they stay completely still, and then the finch, finches come and eat the ticks off Clean of them. them off. Oh, yeah. really? You know, and, and and then I guess what happens every now and then they stomp on one of them and eat them. <laughs> So smart. So, so yeah, it's like you know that's why Fair evolution trade. is yeah. It's, <laughs> that's that's uh that's that's, how, that's how they've been able to survive forever. Interesting. Yeah, they're so, fascinating. Uh, and they the Aldabra, are. Isn't this an Aldabra you have up here? Aldabra, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So speaking of, I, I get it. I don't remember if we touched on this. I am curious. Uh, you know, last time did, did we talk about uh like the whole dinosaur evolution thing? We touched on it a little. Yeah, bit. yeah. I'm just curious because I mean you're obviously a man of the cloth and and stuff like that, but you're you're progressive, you know. I, I would think a little bit at least. Moderate at least. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Be, yeah. So what is your take on that? Because I I we posted a video the other day. I don't know if you saw this this comment, Jake. No, it was one? hilarious. Um, you know, I we posted a video about crocodilians and how dinosaurs and how why crocodiles are still alive and dinosaurs you know with the the the, the extinction event that happened with the the meteor off of uh mexico and so on like that yeah. and and someone wrote a paragraph about just blasting me about evolution and about you know how there were you know dinosaurs 
weren't around a hundred million years ago that they've only been around for it's been only a few thousand years and stuff so i'm just curious what's your take on that well there, there's definitely that theory um that you know that the, that the earth isn't that old that the earth is creationist right they think, call right? them young earth creationists. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and um, they all make the vehement claim that they're the ones that are the only ones that truly believe the scripture but I think there's a different ways to look at that. It's, yeah, because they're looking at it verbatim, like word for word, and not and no poeticism at all. I don't know? even. I wouldn't even mind that. That yeah. wouldn't. I think that wouldn't bother me if, if it wasn't understood that some of these stories are, it's the the point of what they're trying to make mm -hmm. is more. The point they're trying to make is more important than just fighting over the little words here right, and there. Right. But um, you know, for the, the oh. evangelical perspective is. It doesn't really have anything to do with a person's soul, right. whether or not God created literally through Adam and Eve or, th or through the process of evolution. But here's what I, my take on it, which is a little unique, where science and scripture can meet. So what if there was a creation here on earth, a type, some kind of race similar to humans or identical to humans that was already here, when we get to Adam and Eve, because why would God put, the Bible says there were angels with flaming swords mm -hmm. at the entrance to the garden. Right. So it was either to keep Adam and Eve, who hadn't sinned yet at that point, so why would they be punished and not allowed to go out the yep. door? Or was that angel there to prevent people from coming in? Right. Because and when Cain killed Abel, God put a cursed mark on his forehead mm -hmm. so that he would be identified. Well, who was God wanting him to be identifiable to? to? Yep. Right, yeah. And when he went out from the garden, it says he went into a city. Right. Where did that city outside from, yeah. of the garden come from? Yeah. And so my question has always been, the story of Adam and Eve very well may, may be six, literally 6,000 years old, maybe. Right. Who knows? But we now know for sure the Bible says that the Garden of Eden came from that area between the Tigris and Euphrates River, where we all know yeah. this Mesopotamia is the birthplace of civilization, right. the cradle of civilization. So the Bible said that thousands of years before we knew that. Um, and if I'm making the correct assumption that Adam and Eve would have been a more recent special send to Earth mm -hmm. uh, by God, than uh, whoever or whatever was here before. Uh, yeah. so there's a, a theory in scripture called the pre-Adamite world. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow, really? Okay. A theologian named Finnis Dake, mm -hmm. and he has a Dake study Bible. I I am a person who believes in the pre-Adamite world. Okay. Me too. I also believe in and embrace um, in everywhere that context allows it, the literal the most literal translation of scriptures as context will allow, I guess mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. Right. But I don't think that has to be at odds with science. Right. And, yeah. and in, if you can find a place where you think maybe it is at odds and you don't know what to do, ask yourself, is that, if you're the Christian or the Jew or the Islam, depending on which part of the Bible we're talking about, ask yourself, is that part important to my salvation? Right. If it, and important to where I go when I'm done here. If it's not so much, then it's it's okay to have an opinion or a theory that's a little different here or there. Love that. You know what's interesting yeah. is that, you know, yeah. while I was in anxiety hell, as I call it, uh, a couple of years ago, I obviously was, you know, listening to a lot of books about all kinds of different things, trying to find my way to what I believed in. You know, I was obviously raised Catholic, then I, you know, was born again and then kind of fell away from things. Um, you know, but, but interestingly enough, you know, listening to things about Islam, listening to things about Buddhism, listening to things about Hinduism and, and Christianity, they all kind of have the same message in a way, right? You know Similar. what I mean? It's very. it's not exact, right? Yeah. But Praying, it's all kind of like, yeah, it's, it's, it's all like kind of like there's a creator or multiple creators in some religions. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and they all kind of have, and, and interestingly enough, I think like Judaism obviously was, you know, Christianity was born from that anyways. And, and you know, Judaism, Christian. Christian mm -hmm. Christianity and, and Islam are very similar. Yeah, yeah. In the, in the fact they take you know they they have similar 
uh, yeah, the, those three religions share a major portion of the scripture that yeah. we right, all yeah. believe in. Right, yep. yeah. And so that, that's something that I guess I didn't really understand up until yeah. that time where I started listening to different things and I start going like, you know, enlightenment is almost like the same as being, you know, born again, you know, in, in, in a way, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, There's like, similarities and parallels there. In right. Those stories. And that was the thing that really kind of, you know, opened my eyes and, and made me feel better about just... You know what? I still don't know what I believe in, to be honest with you. But I do. I believe there is a a, a greater thing, and I believe that there's a, a, a whether you call it energy or power or a you know a, a, a superior being or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, I, I I believe in that. I don't think that we just ended up here by uh, happenstance. Yeah, so you would say you're probably more agnostic yes. than atheist. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely just... not atheist, a hundred percent. I'd say I'm uh, a a uh, <laughs> I don't Agnostic's know. Agnostic's a good word for it. Though, I, I, agnostic, may, I, I think that might be too harsh. You don't want to close a window or open a door. You yeah. want to be open and see what. Yeah, I think I think uh, agnostic might even be a little bit harsher than what I believe. I okay. think I'm a little bit like, you know, you're leaning in a certain yeah, direction. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think so. You know, but um, but that doesn't mean that I'm not open to other other ideas either. You know, um, yeah, I feel like you. So you feel that more there's a higher power, whether yes. you want to label it God or. Yeah, whatever right. You whatever you want to you label want to. it. And I guess the only difference <clears throat> with Christianity there is like the only way to God is through Jesus, right? Right. right. You know, and, and, well, and, and in, I, yeah, in the type, the sect of Christianity I am part of, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now in yeah, Catholicism, they, in Vatican II, and, and there's been a few things since then where the Roman Catholics believe that, that salvation through the church of Jesus Christ is the only way they know for sure, mm -hmm. but that but there's the a back door the that you might be able to get. Pope has said that certain moral people that oh, okay. do good things could could also get to possibly. Him. But, uh, but that, most likely you're going to be in there. <laughs> that'll be me. I'll see yeah. you up there. But we we Protestants probably really wouldn't. Uh, the more conservative among us would not. Um, some but, liberal denominations don't really care that much anymore. Like if you go to some liber really liberal churches, it seems they've sort of morphed into like good behavior social clubs right yeah yeah hmm, gotcha. interesting. And i'm not i'm just saying that's what they are yeah I'm, yeah no. i'm not forming a judgment here i'm right. just saying that's what they are so yeah speaking of the vatican we went one time that place is crazy creepy i would love to go <laughs> oh it's, it was amazing you would love it just from the standpoint of just the historic and the i could the get thing. lost in that library for months I think. oh yeah it, i i would go back Oh Literally. yeah, I, like, it was really I cool. I feel like it was amazing to see, but there's so much more that you could just see every single time you go because there's so much. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know they have a statue of a pineal gland there? Yeah, no. isn't it weird? Yeah, really. That's they have a lot of interesting stuff DMT in that Vatican, and, though. That's yes. interesting, right? Uh, yeah, and it's uh, where the, what they call the third eye. Yep. Right. Yeah. That's where you're. And they have a statue is. there of it. Yeah. Yep. I wonder why. Did, I mean, the story of the burning bush is a little bit, you know, similar to that acacia being burned. Acacia grows you know, in that area as well. I read too. the sacred mushroom and the cross. Is that what you're talking about? I haven't heard, I haven't read that. No, but I've just heard that theory been spurted around. Yeah. Before. There's uh, there's well, Rogan says something and it goes down as gospel at half the time. <laughs> <laughs> He's nuts. Yeah. I watch him every day. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Rogan's yeah, the, the, the but, Rogan's show. But you know, of course, he's not uh, a, a big fan of of religious folks but long no. story short uh he has this theory that because acacia uh contains high levels of dmt yeah uh that it's possible that if the burning bush was truly acacia when moses climbed the mountain and god spoke to him through the burning bush that what he was hearing and seeing was actually a, a trip Oh, so the burst was okay. burning and he was inhaling this exactly. stuff and getting yeah. he was tripping out yeah. and seeing god in the flames but, yeah it's a, it's a beautiful theory, and I can't knock it scientifically, but I do know of instances where people have tried to replicate that experience, in, in, burning in, in, in. acacia and standing either nearby or even hovering directly over it. And, and they don't have that. Because typically yeah. you'd, have to, you'd have to uh, uh, f like refine acacia to make yes. dimethyltryptamine. Yeah. It would make sense if, but we've tried to replicate that in... And yeah, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. But wow. I'm not saying there's nothing to it. Cause yeah, because you don't know. Sure. I love it when, when you hear a scientific claim that could in some way, anyway, jive with scripture. I think that's awesome. Oh, yeah. I do too. Yeah. I agree. Uh, and you asked about dinosaurs. Yeah. And there is a place in, I can't remember, it's a book of Job. But um, don't, don't hold me to that. No, you're but good. So you're good. Old Testament, it says there were creatures yep. were so big they had legs like cedar trees. Yeah. Now, 
I don't take it so far as to say that was a dinosaur, but yeah. I don't know what else. Maybe an elephant. Um, sure. I remember hearing that yeah. too, like in that scripture. And that was, yes, yeah. people had used that, was that the one teaching, towards like, Oh, well, dinosaurs. look at the dinosaurs were yes. around back, yep. you know, 6,000 yeah. yeah. years ago yeah. with this thing. But Called because I, I leave the door open to that pre-Adamite world theory, to me, I, I absolutely have no problem thinking that the world is, that the earth is 3 billion years old or 4 billion. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, th- I believe that. So but then you know. as the earth is developing down through the years, if Adam and Eve there was something before them then that could explain much of the fossil yeah, record mm-hmm. uh, and sense. that could have very well been a process of evolution but then the descendants of adam and eve they went into those other people and whatever happened through adam and eve mankind was redeemed right yeah if they were either the first ever right or, or they're, they're they were special special and, yep. and their bloodline A- aliens would, yeah. would bring the uh <laughs> yeah. the no, but that's UFOs. where i'm at i UFOs, agree aliens 100%. yeah i agree uh I, you know it's funny i was watching a show the other night on science <laughs> <laughs> <I got laughs> <it. laughs> what what that's just so funny that was just good. <laughs> it was the, good timing it was the alien hybrids yeah uh adam and eve uh but um uh i was watching a show the other day it was really cool on discovery science which i love and they actually had you know, not the Dead Sea Scrolls, but they had scrolls that they had found it, found in that same area yeah, that were like yeah. in really tight. But they dated back to like Six, fifty, 7, fi- years. no, fifty years after Jesus. Oh wow! So they were like just after, very close to the Dead Sea Scrolls time. Right, right. Yeah. So basically, what it was is they said this was the time that really the the apostles would have still been old and or, or oh, around yeah. and and t- and and and. But unfortunately, they can't. It, they're rolled really tight. Oh, so, so they so, break. You know? Right, they can't unroll these. But what they've been able to do now is with with technology is, probably, is right? read one or two pages of them, and they think there there's a chance that literally there could be writings from the apostles or their time, which would be the first things that came literally from like that era. That would be the first Christianity. Because that's what you know. It was. It's yeah. just very. And they said that hopefully in the next couple of years that lidar ish type of yeah. you know yeah. X ray will get more advanced to where they can actually read the entire thing. And there were dozens and dozens of them that they had. That's awesome. But they all were so fragile that you know even with their their X ray, they were see that some were already broken and decayed in the middle. Mm. So there's no way that they could ever unroll them or they would be completely ruined. You know so. Um, yeah. So it'd be interesting to see more. Uh, you know, speaking, you know, one of the things I, I, I I'm we're going going to go down this you're path. Fine, we're fine. going down this path, people. Here we um, go. <laughs> yeah, here we go, and we'll get to some super chats here in a hey, minute. You're good, you're I know good. we got a couple more, but um, so I am. I'm a huge like. I love watching stuff on the Shroud of Turin. What's your take? I love. I'm like fascinated by that, like because there is no so, real explanation. Okay, question. Right? So. Is not every single thing you see the same thing? Because that's how I feel. Like I've watched several things, and I feel like they're all exactly. The What's same. that about the shroud? Yes. Well, no, not really, because because when they they initially I've been seeing did, this since I was a kid. So. Yeah, no, yeah. I know, but but <laughs> but they did like they originally did uh, like a carbon dating on it, mm-hmm. and it I turned remember. out to not be in, in in the time of Jesus. But then they found out that there were chemicals on the on the the shroud that could have messed up the carbon dating but now like they won't let them do another carbon dating or something like that but there's no way that they had anyone... gone through a fire right exactly. so it was a, whatever they found on it a carbon would be that different fire yeah. would right. have screwed all that up right yeah and so uh but but I, i'm just curious what your thoughts are on it because i mean to me it seems like there's no explanation like they haven't ever been able to figure out a way to do it yeah the way it well, is you know okay well my Catholic friends out here, I love you. But I'm gonna explain a little something. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. Um, and what I'm a we're recovering Catholic. About, so. Let's <laughs> say here the Shroud of Turin is an example of what in Catholicism they would call a, if it's real it would be called a relic. Yeah, relic. Yeah. Um, but there is, there, at least for many years, there was a questionable system set up to approve relics. Um, when the Protestant Reformation came. One, uh, Martin Luther was the guy that was responsible for most of that, uh, getting it going. But there were people before him, the Huguenots in France. There there had been other people around that right. time that were rebelling against similar problems. One of the things that even, well, first of all, if the people can't read, it's easy to make them do whatever you tell them. Sure, you know, of course. It says in here, you have to do X, Y, and Z. Well, right, yeah. if you're a horrible, evil person, you can sure. take Manipulate, advantage. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously, not all of them were like that. But... So even if you couldn't, you didn't know if they were 
doing that to you there. But if you visited your church and then you went to visit family and then maybe you went to mass with them or your cousins or whatever, and you realize that both churches are claiming to have all of the nails that Jesus was crucified ah, yeah, with. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and so even the ignorant farmer that couldn't read, so he was probably being deceived by other stuff there, they knew. And Martin Luther said, come on, we need to do it. The only reason they're not addressing it is because it would cause the churches to fight over who would have yeah. the real one. Yeah. The real one. So when they say, when someone says a relic, you need to know, was it, what's the dating on it? Um, what is there? Is there a line of evidence or letters or that like, follows it down through history? The shroud is one of the few things that's publicly known about that does seem to have at least a very defendable history to yeah. it. And uh, we know for sure that it was in existence at least back when it went through a fire in the Middle Ages. Yeah. Um, one of the things that fascinated me is some of the testing on it has shown radiation. Right. That's radiation what I'm saying. Yeah, burns. that's what I've seen. Yeah. And the only way for that to happen naturally would be like intense amounts of like sunlight, yeah. sun radiation. Yeah. It, it would be an extremely unnatural phenomenon. Yeah. And you think about the most important doctrine in all of Christianity is the resurrection. Sure, yeah. The Bible still, says yeah. if Christ is not risen, then our faith is in vain. Right. So, you know, what power, do we think, what power must that have been? Yeah, to, to take to a dead hit person. a dead to, body that's been there for yeah, a, few a while days, yeah. and, and then raise right. it up that that gets my attention yeah the radiation on there really got yeah. got my attention yeah, it's like right. is this it's almost like technology yeah you know yeah, yeah. and there's a lot yeah. of that in the bible a yeah. lot of like weird references to modern day or even futuristic technology yeah. uh flames on chariots and stuff like that well, you know what i mean <laughs> chariots of the god no 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 i'm dead book. serious no, i mean if, i'm dead serious like that the parting was, of the red sea yeah, and stuff that, too yep you know it's like there's a lot of that like you know there was you know like uh um columns of flames was what, yeah. what they were sitting on right and it's like that's just it's i that i just reread uh genesis uh like last year roughly not mm -hmm. even and yeah. i found a lot of that stuff and even like your your pre-adamite world i found myself questioning a lot of that too because like god when uh you know he leaves adam and eve alone he goes somewhere to talk to somebody or something or other things you know what i mean and then comes back and is like oh they're gone and it's it, there's just a lot of stuff that f tri tripped me up this time that i when i first read the bible i yeah, never caught he was looking that was when he went to look for them and found yeah. that they had covered their nakedness exactly yeah, yeah. it's very interesting yeah it's fascinating stuff. Yeah. Misconception. Uh, I got to say, the people that follow this podcast are amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah they are. My, I know this is not a massive group all the time, but it seems like none of us can hear every time. So we're always shifting. Oh, sure, I haven't sure. talked to you in a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I was honored to be such a popular guest. You are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you're a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. I got so many responses from your people. And I've got to say, all of them were positive, like yeah. well, that's people awesome. that don't have any faith, people yeah. that were just curious or had a question about something. Yeah. Uh, Very people, respectful, though. Uh, people that were reptile, people that did share my faith. And I got so many Facebook friends and uh, relationships built. I've had several of them chasing after my tail. You've got to start releasing your own videos. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's yeah. awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah one girl, yes. she's going to kill me, but I was supposed to tell her, tell Lori that she is by far the most favorite that is featured on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well, well then, can you ban her, Tiffany? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, whoever that whoever might that be. Was, let's go ahead and get, get her, her out of here. Let's yeah, Brian likes to keep they're her down. They're good people. No, they're good no people. they are they really great. up and I've oh. made some great friends here. Oh, well, we Glad love them all. It. We love them all. Speaking of the people, let's hit a couple supers real quick. Austin said, Brian's the man. Much love to you guys. Yeah, Glad I could why, catch you live. That's you wanted yeah. to Woo! hit the supers. Whatever. Now, now that's the type whatever. of, now that's the type of comments we, able, we need we, more can of. Can we make him an admin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> now that's the type of comments I want. Uh, Rachel says, Brother Clint's first podcast made me forget. I'm agnostic. Ha ha. Glad to see he's back in the house. Much love to all of you. <laughs> nice. That's Good awesome. Job, there you go. There you go, Rachel. I see some Dingo stuff. Well, Hold if, on. If I you just, just if you just became a not, we might be have you become a Christian by the end of this. Yeah, we're moving you, the needle. Atheist, yeah. Agnostic. Now you're gonna go. You're gonna go all the way. Dingo uh, he threw some flames and he says, "Ah, oh, shucks, making me tear up here." And he says, "I uh, miss you guys big time." So yeah, we love I definitely you, brother. miss you, man. 
Uh, let's see what else we got. We got Tiffany says, sorry, unloading a truck alone. Six queen mattresses to unload all by myself. But Jizzy is my female albino leper. Uh, Leo, yeah, yeah. I bought from you guys. Yes, yeah, she is white. Perfect. Nice. She, yeah, Tiffany is great. Good job, she, Tiff. She's cra- it's crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah, she's crazy. Just she, yeah. Yeah, right, I'll be right back. I just got to use the restroom real fast. I'm going to throw no you guys problem, online. No problem. No problem. Are we yes. online still then? Yeah, we're still going. We're just... Okay, we're just you know, uh, one of the things I get asked, the reason I said something about your people is because uh, I got a lot of questions. I think people felt, oh, you know, I don't really want to go to church or I don't, have, don't know many people who are in ministry. So maybe there was a question they'd always wanted to know and... By far, the question I get asked from them and by just people in general is always about how how is the Bible even defensible? How, you know, wasn't that changed and modified and worked on down right. through the years? And so I like to tell people the brief story that there's a misconception that the Bible is a book. The Bible is a library. Right. It's 66 different books. Right. And there's something like, uh, almost 30 authors, I think it's up there in the high 20s, yeah. authors of these 66 books. And so you have, we like to think of them as individual love letters or teaching letters from God, you know. And when we believe in inspiration, where did they come from? Well, the, most of the first stories in the Old Testament started as verbal tradition, and they were sure. handed down and handed down in Moses hadn't even been raised among his people. Mm-hmm. And he came back as an adult, uh, having been raised in the house of Pharaoh. So it wasn't like he had been raised on these stories, but right. yet here he is to lead these people. And so God, through special revelation to him, says, you know, write these down. But uh, the old rabbis will tell you, and, and Christian ministers will tell you, that these people were familiar with the basics of these stories, mm-hmm. especially the first five books there. Right. right. And um, he was simply writing that down. So that kind of brings the whole creation story into light. It was a verbal tradition handed down yeah. over time. And most of these people already knew it when they read it. Well, what about what comes after that? What about the rest of it? Well, there were books of people that were believed to be prophets. And they had special visions and revelations. And then we get to one of the things they predicted was a coming Messiah. Yeah. Who would be a special savior for the earth. And that's where the New Testament begins right. for Christians as we believe that Jesus was that Messiah. Right. And so that starts with four books that all jive together, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There are right. the Gospels that all tell the story from the their perspective. Story from yeah. a different perspective. Yeah. Uh, if you're a skeptic, I would, I would encourage you to read the Gospel of John. Mm-hmm. It's written by John, a medical doctor who was taking care of the Apostle Paul. But he had not, he was the only guy, writer of the gospel who hadn't witnessed these things. Oh, okay. So he went around like an investigative reporter and he interviewed people. Interviewed people, I got and, it. And so he, his goal was to not just take whatever got like Mark was the first out, so maybe he could steal from Mark. No, he wanted to see, can I confirm right. with other witnesses these stories? That is cool to me. Yeah, yeah, very yeah cool. of course. Yeah. Most people don't realize this, but in the mm-hmm. Vatican Library, there are something like well over a hundred other gospels right. written by people. Problem is, they didn't make it in because it's hard to pinpoint exactly what their connection to Jesus was, right, which is right. one of the requirements to make it in. But so after the gospels, we get into the letters from the church. So all the people that followed Jesus after he died and was resurrected and went back to heaven, they wrote letters that were important for the problems in good things and things we needed help with in the early church. Mm -hmm. And it closes out with a major prophecy called revelation. All of those things make it hard for it to make the argument that it was just made up by one few people to wanted to form an organization to manipulate the poor. And well, it would have had to have been a massive conspiracy theory. uh, Yeah. I think, I mean, I definitely think there's truth to, to, to it there, you know i mean it seems impossible Most people aren't used to hearing that though yeah. and yeah some of your people were like wow that's yeah. that's am- i always always thought of it as one book right one, yeah. with one author now who who wrote revelations john the last living apostle okay. he was a prisoner at the time on the island of patmos there in the mediterranean and he was a prisoner just for being a disciple of jesus mm-hmm. he was put 
uh, in exile there sometime around the age of 90, 95 years wow. old. He was the last living. He was only about 14 when Jesus started his ministry. Okay. He was his cousin, younger cousin. And um, the Bible calls him the disciple whom Jesus loved because he was the youngest of the group mm -hmm. and probably took him under his wing and right, all that. Right, right. And uh, he lived to be about 105, at least, that we know of. That's crazy. So it was extremely unusual. Everyone mm -hmm. who knew him called him grandfather. Mm -hmm. uh, and he lived so long that he couldn't walk anymore. He had to be carried on pallets. Wow, jeez. Uh, people would throng him, you know. Yeah. He was like a, the rock star of the day. Sure, yeah. And, um, but he didn't care about any of that. He prayed stories of healings and things surrounding him were just blow your mind. But he was the last living person that was a witness to the words of Jesus and a partaker in his ministry as one of those 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. And he, when he's writing Revelation, a lot of it is rebuke against the church. We're only 100 years in, not even 100 years in, and we're really messing up. Yeah. And it's a call back to passionate love for God. Right. And away from hypocrisy and backbiting and sniping and right. nastiness. I love that. It's a great way to, to close out the Bible by a man who actually walked with Jesus, yeah. claiming to have had another conversation with Jesus who came to him in spiritual form and right. said, write this down and take it to my people. They it's interesting. It. Now, why is there, why do we not know lineage? Like, why is there not disciples of, or, or like bloodline of the d disciples. You know I mean, they got to be related to someone. Why don't we know that? Like, why? You know what I mean? Like, like yeah, you would almost think they were like. You'd almost think like. Revere, or, yeah, like, yeah. You'd you know, almost think yeah. like, well, my great 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 uncle was, was Mark. Was yeah, was, <laughs> you know? was a an apostle. You know, why is it? You know, or even well, Jesus say, for that matter. You know, I mean, they say some of them probably never married just because they were right. devoted completely to celibate. Ministry. Yeah, right. But there was never a requirement for them to be celibate or not married. That was never put on them. Right. Um, but there is, we know that, um, well, saying no is kind of hard, but a lot of people assume that they probably didn't marry. Some of them did, but... But they might have brothers and mothers. And if they weren't brothers, really yeah. prominent people, maybe that wasn't a big deal, but I've never been asked that question, so I... Really yeah, no, just, I, just, I appreciate I always, your honesty, though. I just though. always awesome. think about that. It's a think Brian like, question. Yeah, no, it's I a know, great I, question. I always it's think about that. Like, Catholicism you know. claims they can trace a line all the way back to the... The Apostle Peter, mm -hmm. but they call that an apostolic line, so that Peter had to lay hands on such and such and pray, mm -hmm. and they right, yeah, yeah, the first bishops and so whatnot. you're not less related, you're just you it's know, a spiritual. Just, yeah, all been touched. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. for in, in Catholicism to be truly anointed and ordained of God, you have to literally be anointed by someone who was descended from the direct touch. Um, mm, so that's how it started. Yeah. That's how the touch touches started. up Peter. Yeah, touch of the Peter. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> touch of the Peter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We don't we don't follow that. For us, it's more of yeah. just yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. your the Protestant view is anybody can be as connected yeah. to God as Peter was. Yeah. And that's the beauty of the offer of, of Jesus. Yeah, I yeah. kind of follow along the more lines of that because I feel like at that, that point that's when you're putting too much emphasis on people. Like, exactly. Yeah. Yep. You know and what I, I mean? Like, like okay, that. from this person to this person when the yeah. reality is it's all supposed to be coming from God, not, yeah, not yeah. from a person, yeah. a person, a person. I will yeah. say I like this Pope, though. You know, I think I he's, too. you know, I think he's, he's pretty cool. Yeah, I think he's a cool Tip. Pope, you know. Yeah, it's like I think he's I seen him wear Ray-Bans the other day. Yeah, I think he's like, the, <laughs> he's like uh, the first Pope. Well, it since maybe John some Paul crazy or something. Stuff like that. Sometimes, yeah. but I mean, there's, yeah. it's just like any other uh, human being. You never want to agree with everything they say. No. Um, I what think he's from? done a lot. Like, he really seems to care about the poor, and he really seems to care about um, maybe going a little step further with family planning in yeah. third world countries if the yeah. poverty is so great if we can teach them about you know even regular natural pl family planning through Catholicism better than what they know right now sure but whatever they wherever they take that it'd be an advancement for Catholicism yeah. to say poverty is made worse by people who continue having babies they can't afford yeah. and we can help with that if we teach these young married couples x y and z Right. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. He's the first to kind of propose that. He's the first to do a lot of things, though. You know, in, in Catholicism, you know, he seems to embrace science a lot more. He's um, he's, he seems to be pretty cutting edge when it comes to 
to I don't know why he still won't let the priest marry. That's the one that I just Yeah, that's a weird one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I never understood it either. Um, Never. Yeah, because there's nothing in Scripture about that, right? It's so similar. I mean, the Orthodox and Catholic split around 1000 AD sometime. And Orthodox can marry, right? It can marry. uh, Yeah, because my uncle's an Orthodox priest. Yeah, they hold to the you're married to God or Christ, like right. That's so, that's the Catholicism yeah. view. So it's like so, that's yeah, their so thing that, for but the that's, nuns. There's for no the scripture to back that, right? Not necessarily, but it does say there are people who can be called by God to celibacy, or what the Bible is talking. It says some people were made eunuchs against their will, like people would okay. be taken slaves, and the males would be castrated. So they're, that's done to them against their will. But other people are eunuchs by choice. Mm-hmm. So. Basically, what he's saying is there are adults who choose to devote themselves yeah. to God and not do that, but it's never was listed as a requirement for service yeah. in ministry. Anyway. Yeah. Noah's been celibate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, he's, <laughs> he's a eunuch. Did you hear? I tried to set him up the other day and he completely <laughs> oh, you, flopped. Did you hear about this? Lord? It was. It was I, I mean, I set him. A, a, set it was him a, a softball. What? Big it was, softball. It was a softball. It was a beach ball, to be so, honest with so you. So we're at the park with Elvis, my lizard, right? And uh, <laughs> just a normal, tumble. and, 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 yeah. Yeah. and a girl, yeah, yeah. a girl Girls comes are up slobbering already. Yeah. No, yeah. a girl comes up. She's first afraid to death, but she's curious. You know, she comes up and she's like, you know, whatever. Introduce she's scared. Herself. She's like, you yeah, introduce yeah, yeah. And and she she says, well, I can't Brian. take a picture. And I say, yeah, I said, she said her name, and I said, oh, I'm Brian. She goes, oh, you would be. I just broke up with my boyfriend named Brian. And I said, well, you know what? Noah's looking. Yes, straight <laughs> up, dude. And she seemed interested. And he, Listen, he, you don't even know her from anything. Don't just be she had converse crazy, on, Lori. She weirdo had converse hose on. at at our she was, son. She was after her mouth was numb. She was like, this is, I'll tell you how the man thinks. She's pretty cute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's about his age. She's single, yeah. and she has a pulse. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and she just there, broke up. She's on the yeah. rebound. She's on the exactly. rebound. She's looking for and a Mom rebound. They're <laughs> going get your stinky horse. Right <laughs> <laughs> because I'm pretty but, but sure Mom. you're not good enough. <laughs> why isn't she good enough? You don't even know her. Exactly. Which why is she good enough? We're trying like, to find out. That's what she's saying she <laughs> yeah. wants Noah to know if she's good enough. Noah already knows. Like I, both of my kids know. Like I'm the highest. You know critic when it comes to anything like, course, i'm just saying i you know he was just I'm trying just, to help i was just trying to help no i know it's lonely <laughs> the kid back on the horse you know <laughs> if he's that lonely he'll take that road himself you don't have to help it <laughs> she hung around for a bit for, she I was bet, walking around I the park she yeah. did which she, makes me tell she you she kept on wandering around watching. like she's circling us like a like a, <laughs> like a shock like, what kind of weirdo search <laughs> some <laughs> randoms with a lizard a giant <laughs> lizard too like huge <laughs> lizard. Wow. Uh, I think the it was rebound a, from a Bryant keep going. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was good. Uh, what do we, do we got? Maria here? said, oh, Maria, uh, uh, "Miss your beautiful fisher, our fishers, our fisher, our fisher." She says, uh, "Miss your beautiful face in the vlog, Lori. Glad you're getting grandbaby time in, but we miss you." Yeah, Thank you. I know we do. Appreciate miss it. Maria's uh, in Alaska. She's going to take us fishing yeah. in Alaska. Ooh, she's good. a halibut fisher. To, she's a commercial Alaska fisher is woman. On my list. So Wait, they said fisher man or is it a fisher woman? You know what? I go fisherman. Let's just stop and say fisherman. Like I'm not into all that. I am. People. I'm not either. It's just it is. Listen, yeah. we're, I don't know. we're mankind. Be, we're I'm humans. Just, they, they you know both what I mean? End it's the same thing. Man, right? That's fine. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Fine. That's good. Austin, <laughs> send some love to Lori too. Somebody's got to keep y'all in check. Yeah, we're Thanks, always. Austin. We're definitely. It's been. It's been, it's, been, fall, it's, it's been falling literally apart. Been a shit show. I know. It's been it's, falling apart. Every real bad. Wrong. I mean, literally, you people are bleeding. Off. I don't know what the. There's blood everywhere. Happen, yeah, I mean, people are getting really yeah, like scars <laughs> yeah, on their face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People I mean, are not the same that yeah. they were. You know, Jessica gets something in her eye. I'm. And, yeah, you know, she's my she almost, There's a fence. Like, there's a fence out back. A, I don't know. There's a privacy 20. fence up here. Yeah, that there's a nowhere. privacy fence. <laughs> that that section does off from the rest of the world. <laughs> please, please, please let us in. Privacy fence that's like backwards. Oh, it's so away. bad, dude. Like, Which, so by the way, bad. how do you feel about their fix of the, 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 the fix did you of see the side? Did you see the asphalt? No. Oh, they, good. They fixed it. Mm, let's go that's, take a look right now fix. and come back. That's the fix. Oh, no, 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 Why don't you go no. Take I a looked look? out there and I was like, okay, <laughs> oh, well, no, they that, didn't do anything. Oh, no, that's the fix. Oh, that was the fix. No, no, that is that's not the, the fix. fix. Oh, that's yeah, it is. Yeah, that's the fix. Well, the, the, the dad came and we, uh, filled it in for her. Oh, okay. Nope. I didn't think anything was done. So. <laughs> oh, nope. no. They spent two days fixing that. Yeah. They spent two days fixing that. Doing what? Oh, no. Yeah, I don't know. 
Were they out there with the We'll be dealing. We'll be dealing yeah, yeah, with that. Yeah. Later. Can you we film it though? Because it's it's really great entertainment. To be honest with you, yeah. I get the impression that Lori is the voice of reason yeah. and the voice of the one you don't want to anger. Yeah, yeah. How'd you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. you just figured this out. Yeah. Yeah. Passion, <laughs> reason. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. Works. It's important. It works because it, you meet exactly. in the middle. Exactly. You it definitely need the both to make things. No, go. that's true. That's exactly yeah. what it is. That's it's great. Like, Sometimes he's like, you need to. And other times I'm like, no, you need no, to. No, you need to. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, so. my allergies are all messed up. You're okay. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's just been going around. Uh, uh, Ashley was really bad with allergies today, too. So I think it's... Those it, plants are out today, plants. dude. Yes. It was amazing, you know... Um, it's quick summers killing well, us Literally all. a week ago, there was like no leaves on the trees. Now it's all flowers and leaves I'm everywhere. I'm telling you what, this week was amazing. So you guys were there Monday mm-hmm. and like I'm watching this and there was just buds yep. like on stuff. And every single day it was just like boom, boom, boom. And like full leaves, full yep. like oh, whatever. Yeah. By when I left yesterday, I'm like, that is yeah, that's just why I'm dying. amazing. Yeah. And well, one week how that, that, things just change with right. this big. But that, that brings me to week. kind of another topic <laughs> is that like, you know, the energy of the world, right? Like how it's connected. I, you know, what is your thoughts on that? Like, I think of like the trees in the, in the, in the, the grasses in the, it's like, it feels like everything is connected. What's, what's the kind of, you know, the, the religious side of that or whatever. I shouldn't say religious. No, it's but God runs through all, baby. All, uh, if you can think of what we could, could just bring it down to earth for me it would be all of the cosmos but if you bring it just down to earth there are separate parts here different species and all kinds of things if we we can break it down as much as we want or we can bring it together as much as we want and to me i think of the earth almost as like a living organism Mm -hmm. yep that's That's made up of other living organisms like so it's the body and everything in there is the cells of that yeah. body, so to speak. Um, you know, it all. I don't want to oversimplify. No, no. But even fine. things like the lava, like there's something going on. These plates and are planets dying too, and moving. Yeah, and, and goo from the middle of the earth is pushed up, and yeah. but yet then life comes out. First, there's death yeah. as a result, yeah. devastation. Yeah, and then life, new, fresh, comes out of that. Yeah. Uh, one of my biggest problems with, I love you all, uh, vegans and stuff. That's great if that's your choice. But the earth is life eats yeah. life eats life. Yeah, eats yeah sure. Life. Yeah, yeah. And that's why, in part, the dinosaurs are so far down in the earth. That builds up every year yeah. more and more layers and more and sediment, more layers. Sediment, sediment, yeah. And we've been here a while and we're all working together and this is... In my opinion, it's all one thing. And that's that was my point, is that that was one of the, thing, the epiphanies, if you want to call it that, that I came out of it when I was really anxious, is how I could connect. You know, there's I'm sure you've heard of, like, earthing, you know what I mean, where you just, like, stand, you know, with bare feet on the, the ground. I've heard and, of it, yeah. and, and, and you absorb the energy from the earth and stuff like that. And um, and it just, I didn't do a lot of earthing, to be honest with you, but, but the idea of it, was was helped me yeah yeah kind of connect yeah. with like everything and, and i remember i'd be sitting out by our pond or something like that and i'd be looking at the butterflies at the at the flowers and you see the flowers and then the flowers go into the ground and then the ground has got grass and it's got and it felt like it was like we were all just one you know like we're all Beautiful. yeah like you said different species but we're all interconnected yeah. in a way and that's why that's maybe why veganism is a little weird to me is that number one not only is it like you said, life feeds on life. That's just the, the way nature is. But like at the same time, you're eating plants that are alive too, yeah. you know? So it's like, and you know, plants just, that are so intelligent. If they're planted mm-hmm. in my greenhouse and I play the sound of running water on a radio mm-hmm. in the corner, the mm-hmm. roots will we'll start reach, yeah. to grow toward that toward sound, sound yeah. not even real water <laughs> yeah. towards the sound yeah. of that water. So if yeah. you say, well, oh, they're picking up a moisture in the air. No, they're not. They're yeah, responding to the sound. Audio. Yeah, yeah it's and crazy. So there is a plant intelligence that we don't have a grasp of yet. Yeah. But we're learning now, a lot about it, though. For we sure. are. Yeah, with mycelium tests. and all that stuff. You know, these mycelium mushroom networks that run throughout the forest help exactly. trees transmit nutrients to different parts of the forest that are lacking. I mean, it's incredible. The largest organism on Earth is a mushroom. That's right. Yeah. Mycelium okay. network that's like giant, Gigantic. right? Gigantic. 
Yeah. And it's up in the Pacific Northwest. Right. And they're working to preserve these patches of rare fungi because they think it might be what saves us from a lot of our problems mm -hmm. because w w fungus was the first form of life on Earth. Right. Yeah. And so in a way, we all... I don't know. Is it no, toenail no. fungus. We all no. come from. <laughs> yeah. But you're right, though, and we and we're closer to fungus than any other kingdom. Yeah, you know, by far. I mean, they breathe they breathe oxygen, let out carbon dioxide. They feast on matter. You know, I mean, it's incredible. It makes me wonder. You know, we talk about plant intelligence, or yeah. what is there in a mushroom? We don't know. That's why I get excited about science because I keep thinking there's always something new to discover around the corner. It's a new answer. Yeah. yeah. I get excited about the Bible because it says it's a a, a living word. And I have lots of books I can pick up and read. Um, and I will forget something here or there as I read it again. And like, Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. When I pick up my Bible and I begin to read, especially in the New Testament, I can read the same thing over and over and, and over. And meanings, it's like yeah. uh, spiritually I'm, I'm getting something fresh each time. Yeah, for you. It's, it's continually yeah. feeding me. It's uh, I make sense to me when it says it's the bread of life, you know, but... Yeah. Because it's like going to the feeding place and being fed again. And every day I need to eat. Right. And every day there's something there for me to eat. Yeah. And so, I don't know, I, I think I like to look for connections like me that, too. interesting yeah. things. I don't go so far as to say, I don't know, I guess, whether or not there is an energy that connects the world. But I just, I'm talking about the biological sphere of the earth and right. all the creatures on it biologically so interconnected yeah take one thing out and look what happens right an well, insect species true. you know is insignificant but then it goes out and some birds they either have to adapt or die yeah, yeah. and um yeah you see that in just with invasive species for right. instance you know yeah. you, you add something to an ecosystem and and what ends up happening i mean i always talk about the the cane toads in australia right. they were killing off all these animals and we're seeing massive devastation and then it just in you know, a very short period of time, these animals have evolved to be able to either handle the poison or learn how to get rid of the poison. Yeah, right. By, you know, kookaburros now will bash them against a tree to get rid of the poison before they eat them. So sick. You know, and, and this is something that happened within just 30, 40 years. Li yeah, you know? lifetime. I mean, you know, they, they were, you know, in, in a lot of species like death adders up in, 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 in slaty grays and stuff like that that are up in, in, in Darwin that were massively dying off because of cane toad consumption are now starting to rebound you know that species which is is really interesting how it is it's just i, I find it all fascinating you Course. know uh galapagos islands is 98 percent atheist it's mm. one of the most unreligious places on the face of the earth and of course it's where darwin wrote yeah, the darwin origin did. of species by yeah. natural selection well it's it's fascinating because the ministry organization that I work with mm -hmm. is one of the only ones that has ministers there. Like they have their own churches there. It's just not too okay. many people go. Right. But then we had this boom of young men in the area that had converted. They just, something happened, a spiritual revival of some kind, and they wanted to be trained. And so we have Bible training centers down in South America and, mm -hmm. and, and into the Galapagos Islands and, it's amazing to see what God, how God moves, even in places where, from the Christian perspective, there's no other explanation for it because there's not a lot going on there, and not the church isn't really wanted. If you took yeah. a survey, yeah, and yet there's these Seeps interesting through, things yeah. popping up. So yeah. in the place where science is held up at its highest, yeah, God's love still shines through. I don't yeah. think He has to be in opposition to that. No, I, I, that's that's my my thing. No matter where I end up falling in life, is that you know I think they, it's a bridge between the two. I mean, you don't have to be anti science to be pro God. Yeah, I agree. You know what uh, I mean? Yeah, and vice and, versa. And, yeah, and, and that's that's the thing that I think is is interesting. And I think that again, you know, like let's say there, I know in this. I God, I got to read this this this. Uh, this comment, you've got to go back and read this. Yeah, I can't wait. It's really a good one. But I mean, like some Christians will literally talk about how like there weren't dinosaurs. Or that they're you know putting I mean? like, there to yeah, test like, your yeah, faith yeah, or something. Know, yeah, you know? and it's like, well, they're dinosaur fossils, you know? Yeah. That, and that's what this guy said. He said, if dinosaurs were 100 million years ago, they would be dust and there'd be nothing left. It's like, no, they're actually rock right right it's, it's right. not they're they're not bones anymore yeah. the bones didn't turn to dust i mean then the bones did kind of turn in but they turned into rock you it, know it depends on where they're at geologically in some environments yeah they, they right the right soil is such and the acidity and whatnot that it never has a chance to develop into stone right, right. so 
in other places there was enough dryness or right. whatever a pH well, even, in yeah. the land and the air and so it, it hardened over time instead of dissolving over time but yeah I've heard that silliness yeah but that's what that's what I mean this person just laid into me so hard saying yeah. that there can't be dinosaurs because they would been they would been dust it's all fake it's all it's all science just trying to pull the wool over our, our you know and I'm but, thinking like you're the ones that that are making people not want to be you know, believe in God, you know, yeah. cause you're like, you're crazy. You know, it's like, obviously, you know, there, there's, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. There, you know, there probably science goes too far one way yeah. and, and religion goes you're far, not saying too far. Religious people, I people hear that they might be them. You're not saying religious people are crazy. You're saying some of the ideas. Yeah. The radicals on both sides. Listen, I believe Fundamental. in, I believe in, 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 in centrist in almost every aspect in life yeah. because i think radicals on the right side or radicals on the left side are all whether it's religion politics uh science whatever's i think that you know there are scientists that probably will go to their grave oh, trying to yeah. to prove that there isn't a god there's but they're never going to prove that in their whole life you know where's it there's whoa, been a revival Dawkins, going on yeah. in in science in the field of molecular biology they're finding these new discoveries are blowing people's minds and yeah. and some of the recent discoveries and or i guess there's a lot of a lot of it's still theory but the speculation is building based on more and more evidence and things like quantum physics of interdimensionality and things yeah. that go way beyond what we understand and what if we're not so far apart as you think That's you start right. you start getting out there describing different dimensions well what if well, Where is that? heaven? Why can't yeah. we see that right now? Yet we believe it's real sure. because it's not in this dimension that I can see with with my eyes. Sure. So Christians accepted this potential a long time ago. Right. And so there are times when both sides are a little jerky to each other and shouldn't, yep. shouldn't be. How I've come out about it is let's just say maybe uh, my friends who believe the earth is 6000 years old love them it does but it, it just doesn't matter to me that much right. i love the story of it and it's important and i think it's relevant and i'll never sit here and say that anything in the bible isn't true or it was made up or i just don't go there I, it's not me i believe it all but i just sit and i think if they are right it doesn't affect, it's in the same way that me saying well maybe it's over on this way is not going to affect my salvation Right. Them being right on it and me yeah. getting it wrong isn't going right. to affect my See, salvation. I love that thought, and I think I wish mo more people had that, is exactly that. You can, you know, argue one way or another on a lot of things, but the reality is if it has no bearing on the salvation part and on that, then does it really matter who's right or For wrong? For a Christian, because, it shouldn't, no. Right, exactly, because, you know... when. And I think that's part of the problem. I had a great pastor, that. and he was very conservative. And, and in some ways, I am too. In other ways, I'm more in the middle. But he was very conservative. And one of the things he taught us in Bible college was don't major in the minors. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's true. He said the core fundamentals that we do hold dear are so important and so non-negotiable right. that we shouldn't have to treat all the peripheral things as those they're non-negotiable. Right. We don't see that in the message of Jesus. That, oh, he he points out the things that he wants us to keep in that higher non-negotiable category. Right. So it's not a mystery. Yeah. Right. So don't major in the minors with some good it's advice beautiful. I got. Uh, no, that's yeah. a good advice and about think, everything. Yeah, I think that's the downfall <clears throat> of so many religious people, you know, is, is you get caught up on all the little things that one way or another don't really matter. You know? Well, I'm a, I'm a political activist. I love politics. Um, I'm libertarian because i just i want the government out of our way and so we can all make our own choices about whatever we want to do but in that in politics there there has to be some ego yeah you sure. Know, we, oh yes i'm not saying that i'm promoting bad haughty ego i'm saying that that's just the way the game is played you think you're right i think i'm right now we have to prove it to one another yeah in religion there should be no ego yeah um God doesn't like it because he wants to be held in such a high esteem. We have to clearly say we, we, we don't have a right to be haughty and have a big ego because we're <laughs> nothing like you and we're not in charge. Right. right. <laughs> so if I apply that same thing to my interactions with others to say, I come at this saying that I believe the Bible is God's word. I believe that's irrefutably true. If you don't, that's between you and God. But I'm going to tell you, hey, that's what I think you should believe. Here's sure. why leave the ball in your court but it's when we add my ego behind the defense of my argument 
I'm taking a role that the Lord doesn't need me to take. I'm right. not the Holy Spirit. Right. He, he wants the Holy Spirit to get into someone's heart and make those yeah. finer little things and let it be his word, mm-hmm. not my word. Yeah. Right. Let God himself respecting their free choice. Mm-hmm. How can I not do the same thing? Right. How dare I put myself in my judgment ahead sure. of even God's? Right. That's where my perspective is not so much that I... There's a lot of things that's quote unquote more liberal or progressive churches believe that I would not nothing to do with. Right. I wouldn't want my name even put on it. A lot yeah. of this woke nonsense is going yeah. around right now. But I know you don't want to get too political here. My point right. is just that we can come to the table and say, what are we really agreeing on? Mm-hmm. And can is that enough to help us be united on some yeah. important things we need to help one another with? The most important things. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing is, you know, you you can do the semantics back and forth. And the reality is, is if the basic things that are what is true are there, who cares how you fall on these other things? Because you know what? Honestly, that's between you and God. That's not between me and you sure. and between, you know, uh, you know, you to do, because that's exactly how we should be is right. listen, that's between you and God. And again, not my problem. Point them right? point to the scripture. This is the yeah. Christian perspective. Say, hey, this is what I think the Bible says about that. Go check it out and get them into that mindset of that's a more of a Protestant perspective is let mm-hmm. the word of God be your judge. Yeah. And people of God show others the word of God. Yeah. And let, and let the word. Well, of yeah, God I mean, I think that it, when you're, you know, judge judging so much it just turns people away of course you know yeah. I mean? when you're like i don't I want to be like show that, them that you know? and show them the love of god yeah because that's yeah. that's usually the opposite an of what people do not. exactly and so many people go to the anti and that's what pushes people away yeah is is that just judgmental yeah. you know stuff. well there the bible tells us to be judgmental with ourselves right yeah yeah. Well, we're, I'm we're good at that. supposed to look inside and say, <laughs> well, this is the only way you'll know if you're doing right or wrong. There's yeah. a judgment that takes place. Is yeah. this right or wrong? Your kids, you have to judge your kids. Yeah. You, you cannot be a good parent if you don't. Are they doing right or wrong? Yeah. Well, you can't say whether it's right or wrong unless you're making a judgment on whether sure. it's right. Sure, right, yeah. And then you have to think about it in terms of when you go into new relationships. You save yourself a lot of heartbreak by saying, based on the evidence I see here, we don't have enough values in common that we won't be at each other's throats. Right. And, yeah. Sure. Uh, so those are the types of judgment that are good and encouraging right. scripture. But then there's other type where man times to, in an egotistical way, put himself in the seat of God. Mm-hmm. And that happens that's a lot, when yeah. we're talking about judging the destiny of a person's soul. Yep. That is never man's job. No. job. Right. And, and uh, so we don't have the power to, forgive sin but we can point you to the one who does right and um and we definitely think he knows what's sinful and he points it out in scripture and we'll show you where that's at and we'll leave how you handle that right between you and the lord yeah and how you let the holy spirit speak to you through the word because he'll show you what you need to hear on that sure. day no oh. no i agree and and, and told me a story you. about your yeah. mother-in-law yep. yep you were in one of these horrible times yep and, i was in a horrible time yep. and a good experience with it a Bible believing Christian touched your life in a yeah. special way for that. Period. She's still very, you know, she's very, you know, she, it, she's, she, yeah, she still is a very big spiritual leader in, in, you know, uh, our family, I think, you know, she's gotten a little bit more kooky in the last couple of years, but, uh, that but, uh, to all of us. yeah, but, uh, it's age, yeah, age, yeah. but, uh, you know, she, she's become a little bit more, ri- she's watched too much Fox news. I think well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what, that'll do what, it. What basically <laughs> happened. That'll it's like, you. you know, she, she's, she's, she's just kind of went down that conspiracy road. But, uh, what does Luke have to say? Luke said, finally caught a live question about ball python breeding. Can I leave males in even if the female is pregnant? I mean, you can, but once she's actually fully gravid, uh, I wouldn't, I would pull it out because just it's stress, just going to be yeah. stress on both of them. The male's not going to want to eat as well. The female doesn't need the male in there. So once they're fully gravid, just, just do it. And then that's all I got, Mr. Brian. Oh, my gosh. So what else you got, Laura? You got any other probing questions for Brother Clint? Um, hmm. Good question. I don't know. I feel like we've covered a lot of good yeah. things. Yeah, we've been all over the place. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> been around the barn and back, huh? It's a I good know. podcast always. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> so, so you, I don't, I don't know how it, it's true or not, but what Brian threw out there. So do you believe in Bigfoot? Oh, yeah, yeah, exists? yeah. I... <laughs> 
I'm curious. Yeah, okay, this is I a good one. I'm, I'm glad that you brought this up because I'm super excited about this. I believe in the possibility of Bigfoot, and and we know that there was a large hominid like Bigfoot that did live in North America a few several million years ago. What's it called? Uh, Australopithecus? Australopithecus. Yeah, 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 Australopithecus. Yeah. yeah. And um, so maybe it's no longer here, but those oral traditions were handed down because yep. there was a time when our hominid descendants actually did live with these people. And probably yeah. had to f be Early afraid humanity. of them in yeah. some degree. Yeah, had yeah. to fear them, and so that would have passed down. Yeah, I don't know. I've been watching this show called Expedition <laughs> Bigfoot, and every week they say they're so close. Yeah, I've been watching it too, unfortunately. <laughs> I, <laughs> I keep getting further. They've been crap. Getting, they've been, every week they're saying they're so close, and I believe them. <laughs> Every week it's on season twenty four now, yeah, but yeah. every doing week great. it's like we've never been closer. Yeah. We've the never only been closer. Possibility that I would say, and, and I'm not even saying that I embrace this theory, but what if there are points of interdimensional or weaknesses between dimensions, and these are interdimensional, interdimensional creatures? Yeah. And maybe that's some of what we're seeing in the UFO sightings and stuff that are going. Around. A lot of people talk about that. A lot so of people talk about. Now we're getting about, into the like the, yeah, the movie we saw. Like, yeah, like the yeah, like uh, uh, Doctor Strange. <laughs> yes, yes, Doctor Strange. Different dimensions. Um, <laughs> oh, my son just saw that. It's a great said movie. It was, amazing. It was, it was good. really it was good. good. <laughs> it was it definitely highly recommended. So okay, I never really thought about no, it actually, that way. No, actually, there's there's a big but, theory, there's a big theory uh, yeah. in Bigfoot uh, uh, the Bigfoot community that say that yeah. they're interdimensional. All right. I was gonna say I think I heard Art Bell or somebody positive at first years you know how you yeah. up late at night and he's on talk i don't yeah, know if yeah. you remember who of he course is. of course yeah. <laughs> yeah coast to coast am will yeah. scare you to <laughs> death yeah. i always happen to turn it on when it's somebody on there about demons or ghosts and i'm oh, half gosh. asleep and i'm like no oh, gosh. not right I'm now tired. not right now i'm too yeah. tired <laughs> Yeah, no, it's uh, but a lot of people talk about that, and I do think that a little bit about UFOs. I think a couple things about UFOs. I think that could be interdimensional. I think that they could could there possibly be us from the future, yeah. us you or know? just us now. Yeah, yeah I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or think even us now, exactly. Yeah, that mean. seems the most. Bob yeah. Lazar. Of course, uh, I know Bob. Yeah, he's believe it or not, 51. he lives in Michigan. Do you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, lives right outside of Lansing. He Arizona, yeah, he, 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 he actually has a. I know, right? What do we do? Uh, he he, this he would lives. Uh, he lives like forty five minutes from here. I heard him recently <laughs> talk, and um, he doesn't really like talking about it that much. No, he does. But he not. did Rogan, and I, I thought it was interesting. He had a was, terrible yeah. migraine. And he put up. Yeah, with I heard. The show. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, but you know, he's never changed his story down through the years. And his story is that well, the government found, or someone found, and it got into the hands of the government craft that were found in an archaeological dig that are presumed to be millions of years old and were made of metal alloys we couldn't identify yet. Yeah. He always claimed that there was an element right and the thing was, was is not that on earth that right. they found and now they know that that element exists. Now since his Even story, he's been saying since the 80s or whatever. He yeah. said it since the 80s. And when they raided his house during, do you see the recent documentary? I he did, did see it. Yeah, I did. Yes, his I did. wife was video, and as they raided his home, and they were looking for that. They were looking for that element. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, because he has a place called like nuclear something or other. He you says know, like he's, new, he's only yeah. alive still yeah. and able to continue talking because of a couple of things he knows and has set up like as, as an insurance policy uh, I see, yeah, if yeah. anything happens to yeah. me no, i've know, been i've that, been that information disappears too, i've been yeah. i've been actually following bob the bob lazar story since he came out like with george kemp and stuff mm -hmm. like that and or nap or what george nap. nap yeah george nap um like because i used to watch a show remember, what was it called in sight of Insight is that what it was called? Insight of, I, I think it was called. In search of. In search. In search well, no, of, no, there was in search of with Leonard Nimoy. There was another one called. Um, dang it! It was. Uh, I, I know remember. you're the king of the obscure weird. Yeah, it was like shows. one o'clock in the morning on Saturday nights, <laughs> yeah, I know and it either. wasn't in search of. Uh, like I watched in search of when I was a kid <laughs> with Leonard. <laughs> Did Nimoy. you see L Lazar's video that he made outside of Area 51 with his friends that, when they got arrested? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. he said, "We'll go on this night, and you'll see the yep, test and, flights." Yep, and they and they're they, taping, and here's the test flights yeah. of the exact kind of things we see in the commander david fraber's tic tac yeah. video it yeah. moved it's same thing it's yeah. moving yeah. in that way yeah. where it can't be a typical propulsion drive yeah. yeah so there to me they finally figured it out good enough that we're seeing these out it's pandemic time so nobody's at work everybody's outside more and we're seeing things in the sky more than we have we've got video cameras running all the time yeah, we're catching them and crap 
yeah. we weren't catching them in yeah. before. No, I, I don't disagree with that. And one of the things I've talked about, not only the Bob Lazar-ish type of thing where, you know, we could have reverse engineering of some craft wherever they be from the future, interdimensional. Yeah. He you says know, Zeta different. Reticuli, there's yeah. a star cluster, and it's even, it's even uh, it's the same pattern that's drawn on, uh, in a place on the pyramids in Egypt. Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah. That's where it gets strange, right? Well, and that's the yeah. other thing that gets strange, right? Is the is the, the the cosmic patterns of pyramids throughout the entire world. Yeah, all monolithic exactly, structures. Yeah. yeah, that are exactly the same in you know areas that we would have no way of knowing each other. There was that recent yeah. video of these flying objects that were pyramidal. Did you see yeah, that? Oh, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw the one. Yeah, I and, don't know. If and it the was government hoax or no, because the, the government came out and said it was actually a government video. Okay. It was off of a a, a, a destroyer. Uh, okay. It was actually a U.S. Uh, Navy destroyer that that did it. A pyramid. It was kind of going in the sky. It was a night vision one, and that and the Pentagon came out and said that that was legit. They yeah. didn't say what it was. They just said it was legit. It did come from the the the, the U.S. Navy. Senator Harry Reid for years was trying. Oh, to he get, was a big guy. Yeah, uh, he's that, a big UFO guy, yeah. and and he was trying to get more information out to the public. At my area where I come from, people didn't want to hear anything he had to say because of the letter before his name. You right, know, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I grew yeah. up in farm country, so yeah, yeah. you got to look long and hard for a Democrat. Yeah, yeah, Democrat, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, he was pushing and saying they're hiding all this stuff, and somehow, I don't know who was instrumental in doing it, but when they did the COVID relief yeah, bill... Yeah, he got it in there, yeah. They was got, pushed in there that yeah, they had yeah. to declassify Disclosure, a yeah, bunch disclosure. of their... Yeah. UFO or what's their name called? The UAP. UA, yeah, 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 UAP. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unidentified aerial, aerial phenomena. phenomena. Yeah. Yeah. And come to find out, yes, it's all true. We've been yeah. seeing things since yeah. at least the 50s. Yeah. And yes, we have a possession of alloys that do not appear to be of this world. Yeah. No, it's, it's crazy. No yeah. full admissions to any. Well, dirty it's interesting. Business. I think yeah. that they said that there was at least seven presidents that have. Incl including Jimmy Carter, who's probably the most, you know, recent, uh, that said that they saw UFOs in their life. And then there is, of course, um, the the Nixon. Had, did you hear about the Nixon thing where he was friends with Jackie Gleason? Yeah, Jackie Gleason was a big, big time. UFO. Yeah, he you built. He wanted house? to build his house. Yeah, yeah. especially into the UFO. So uh, apparently, Lori there opened up a can of conspiracy. I, <laughs> so apparently, uh, Jackie Gleason and. President Nixon were friends, yes. good friends. Apparently, there was a time when he went to Jackie Gleason's house. And they got and, drunk. And yeah, and there was a few hours where they disappeared. Like, they, there was no way they didn't know what happened to him. And the, the rumor is, is that he took that, him to a place where there were actually, you know, alien yeah, craft. I already flew him to Area 51 to show, because they got drunk, and he said it'd be... Yeah. You want to know for sure? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's 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 the story. The dirty, I don't know old, if it's nasty Nixon boy. He, yeah. he, I bet he finally loosed up when he had a few drinks in it. Yeah, yeah. Although I wonder, you know, the only thing I've wondered, you know, is is it's crazy to me that like Trump would be a guy that would come out, right? Yes. You, he and would he say, said he was gonna he was going to let us know yeah. whether or not there was that stuff going on and he never did. He never did. And I remember him in saying lie? like I remember in like No in, way. In, I remember in an interview though, he like early on in his presidency, first year, I remember him saying something like, If you guys had any idea what I know. Yeah. He said something on that lines. So and I'm sure uh, but, he's, that's true. You know, probably yeah. the ABC. Yeah, but it's just interesting that he's kept it secret. Well, Clinton and Obama sort of hinted around that I think I heard both of them in interviews at different times that it's just what's at Area 51? Oh, it's just, you know, flight experiments and stuff like, yeah. you know, kind of brushing it off like, yes, there's something there. No, I can't really talk about it much, yeah. but it's not as weird as what you think. Right. But if you look at that Bob Lazar video and a few others that have those really high power cameras and yeah. they've got on the mountaintops yeah. nearby during flight days. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, that's the other thing with the Bob Lazar thing, right, is that he knew, he talked about Groom Lake when people were just talking about Area 51. They didn't know it existed. They didn't even know it existed. And yeah. he, he was talking was about S Groom Lake. S4. Or S4, or yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's where he worked, you yeah. know, and, and he explained it. And, and this is what a lot of people said, like... He described the key entry thing to get into the building and they said there's no such thing it just does it that doesn't exist that's, that's proof he lied well now somebody helped produce yeah. one of these old somebody had saved the old yeah. key card thing yeah. for their business yeah. that was just like he described yeah 
Oh, there's been a, there was even like a security guard that now says has came out and said that they remember him coming in. Yeah, like that worked at S four, and they came, you know, like yeah, I remember Bob Lazar. And this is the thing that I I know they they were trying to crucify him on is well, there was two things. One was the fact that and I don't think this was in that latest documentary, but a, a earlier thing I saw in it where, um, like he 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 provided like U.S. government pay stubs. When they said that he didn't even, they, they like, they wiped his, his education where he had a degree as a, you know, a whatever, you know, whatever it was, physicist, and they wiped his education. And then the thing was, is when they said, well, can you tell me what your professor's name was at Yale or wherever he went to? And he couldn't remember. And I'm thinking, I don't remember my professor's names. I yeah. don't, I don't, I just don't remember names. You know, I can remember a lot of things, but I can't remember, I can barely remember anyone's names, but, um. Well, they produced uh, documents and pictures that all back up his what he was doing yeah. back then. And, stuff and, the, like and the biggest thing is that he's never wanted to profit from any of this. Yeah. He doesn't even so, like talking about so it. So, like, yeah. So, what is? Why would he want to you know, put his life in danger and put his his credibility and all this other stuff? You know, and he told Joe Rogan that he regrets ever telling, and if he could do it over again, he wouldn't have told. Yeah, because the biggest heartbreak to him was losing his access to be able to work on such fascinating science. Yeah. And yeah. but being young and wanting to, he was dealing with the betrayal of his wife, which they were listening in on his phone. That's how he found out his wife was cheating. Jeez. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, it was a nightmare for him back in those days. But you know, he made that st stupid choice, and he said, "I just wish I would, I would have kept secret for the rest of my life." If yeah. I, at looking back, right? If I could have kept working on that cool science. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine. I mean, that was like the dream job for someone like that, you sure. know. But, you know, and then the other thing that when you get back to it, whether it's reverse engineering aliens or whatever the case may be, if you do think about it, I mean, think about the the, the, the stealth bombers, you know, yeah. that, that were a mystery for 50 years. So that was 50, now 70 years ago, we made that technology. And they say it, it, it started it, with what they were doing. Right, there. exactly. Yeah, think about that, though. But 70 years ago, we made what we know now is the most advanced plane. What have we done in the last 70 years? Yeah. 70 years ago, we didn't have computers. We didn't have, you know, cell phones. We didn't have the Internet. We have, you know, think of how far we've come technology in our techno technological advancement in the last 70 years. And this is the U.S. government. And all we know about is the latest thing that they did 70 years ago. So for 70 years, we don't know what they've been doing. Well, what, what Lazar said that's just as scary is he said not all of these artifacts are in the hand of the government. Oh, Some geez. are in the hand of corporations. Oh, that These digs in that area, there was land owned by other people, and, and nobody knew for many years. But some of their descendants either found it or bought it, and it's exactly the same stuff that what they... Wow. He said he knows for sure of a couple pieces that are in corporate hands. So then you wonder, are they using that to develop things? And right. if they are, how is that going to affect us? I know recently they discovered widespread lead poisoning on American soil. It's in really? infiltrating our crops. They're not really sure what's causing that. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Crazy the world is in a tough pot. I, want it, I just want them to just develop an airplane that doesn't have turbulence. Can you ah. do that? Can they do that? Can they take the gravity away so we could just zoom through like a, a smooth ride from wherever we want to go? So, I don't like flying. But. Yeah, I'm, well, you're tall, so that makes it even harder. You know, I mean, you can't, even in first class, you're probably not comfortable. In, no, in, 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 and I've in, had a couple of nightmare experiences too. Yeah, just bad flights. Oh, yeah, yeah. going through a lightning storm and hitting a air pocket or something and yeah, yeah, down like straight down. And yeah, <sighs> it's scary. I, I've been through a plenty because I've flown so much. I hate it. But I imagine. Uh, but yes, yeah, so now I just wanted that. Just get, get, get me to that technology. You get hit by Mike Tyson. On a plane. I know that happens all the time. Did you just see? So they just came out about that. That the guy has like a criminal background and yep. And, and like the guy across you know, the aisle was videoing him on purpose. Yeah, to try to yeah to try up. to get. Oh yeah, it's, he deserved it's, that. Clobbering. Yeah, I, I hope he. Yeah, I hope. I hope whatever happens legally, Tyson is not penalized yeah. for this what do we got real quick rachel says may i ask brother clint how he thinks ghosts happen like how do you end up as a ghost asking for future haunting goals bigfoot uh eats missing hikers <laughs> uh we talked about that a little bit on the last podcast uh i said that to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord that's a biblical teaching from the apostle paul but we talked about maybe if heaven is a dimension and in some places that dimension of heaven and earth make contact and you have some 
shadow of interdimensionality there. Yeah. I don't know. There's yeah. a lot of theories posited. The other is it could be demons. It could be deceptive spirits appearing as loved ones because if you, uh, from the biblical perspective, if he can get you to believe anything that contradicts the account of Scripture, then he's uh, in an offense to God. So if you right. believe that spirits of the dead walk around here and don't have an eternal destination, why would you even believe there is a heaven or a hell? Right. So then, you know, I, that's my point of view, is that maybe if they are real and they're not demons, and they're not angels, maybe it's because of an inter interdimensionality pocket yeah. there or something. Yeah. Um, or then I've heard theories that it's like the after effects of the energy of that person living there. But yeah. I, I don't know if I believe in all that mumbo jumbo either. So I know people really see things that they yeah. can't explain. Yeah. I've seen things that I can't explain that I don't know if, if they were angels or demons. But I can't build a doctrine on it from scripture. So I leave it at that. Pray on it. Read the Bible. See if you can find an answer in there. But from my perspective... Most likely, it's not the direct soul of the loved one that you think it is or the person you think it is. And if it is, it's probably because of some shadow of interdimensionality yeah. that might yeah. be occurring there where yeah. we're seeing something that we, under normal circumstances, we wouldn't or shouldn't, wouldn't or shouldn't yeah. be allowed to see because of something that's happening there. Right. No, that makes sense. I, I, I can buy that. Uh, Dylan says, hey, Brian and Lori, been following you guys since Snakebite days. I talked to Brother Clint about hey, German Shepherds. Dylan. Uh, and he has a great story from his childhood about a female German shepherd. Yeah, I love it. We've got a German shepherd. You know, we have a, a, a he's, a, how old is Zeus? Um, gotta be like eight or 10, right? He's gotta be like eight or nine, something yep. like that. I think he but, might be yeah. nine this year. Sweet. Yeah, he's he's getting a little bit, like he's starting, age is starting to catch up to him a it's little great. bit. It's just like, yeah, he's getting gray. He looks adorable. Moving though, a little so. creaky, you know, you know, it's like, but I love that dog. German shepherds are freaking so Dylan's yeah. a good man. Disabled vet out there. Oh, that's nice. Going to school and making something I mean, something not that he's disabled, but good for him. Working with working with his new dog here eventually. Oh, that's awesome. Good. So would that be a service dog? I or think just it's mostly pup? just an awesome pet. Just, it's just a pet. Yeah, he's, not, he's not that. He can get around. Okay, he lives good. right close to the dog park, and he's excited okay, about maybe it. it will help him exercise more. Good. good for good, you, good, Dylan. Good, yeah, good, good for you, Dylan. I hope everything goes well. Uh, AB Thriller says, what's up, guys? Joining late today. Just wanted to say hello and have a good weekend. Thanks, AB. And then uh, Becky threw some love. Becky love. threw some love. Did you see that she sent us some lobster? What? And some clams, and too. And some clams. What are you talking about? You don't know? <laughs> you don't know? You, you gotta don't watch know about the, vlog. the lobster You know I'm not here anymore, You gotta watch the vlog. So. You could be you here just, in spirit. I mean, no. you're, you're doing nothing all day. Can you at least watch literally the vlog? Literally nothing. I mean... Literally sitting on the couch watching TV baby. all day long. It doesn't even move. <laughs> you could just watch the vlog at least. <laughs> you know? You know it, you'd know what's going on in our life. Yeah. You'd know what's up. So. But yeah, so she sent us uh, from <laughs> Canada. Then. From Canada, she sent us uh, jarred lobster. Jarred lobster. So where is it? It's in the refrigerator. Cool. Did you eat it? Wait, some <laughs> of it. I'm going to eat the rest soon because it was really good. Why didn't we have that? We first? tried the clam. And, Why didn't ooh. we have that later? Yeah, the clam was so good. Clam wasn't so good, but we fed it. We, as a matter of fact, I saw yesterday Mike was feeding more clam off to stuff. <laughs> We've been feeding clam <laughs> off, dude. And so the clam worked out really well. Yeah, just yeah, not so send for more. I bet. Yeah, I bet. It went over a bunch well. of stuff. It went over that. good, but yeah, it's uh, so that's it's uh, but no, the lobster. I, I shouldn't have told you. I'm gonna eat my lobster now. Butter yeah, it up. I'm hungry. It actually, it's it really is good. I didn't realize you could send just a can of lobster. You know, as long as it's canned. Yeah, I think the, the canning is what makes it easier to ship. Fresh yeah. stuff is hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah fresh would wouldn't be so fresh. Well, like yeah. here in the states, you can ship it on ice, you right? Know, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But I think probably more difficult to go so across much. the border. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it was good. I'll, I'll, I'll let you have one piece if you're lucky. I don't know if I want it. No. All right. Okay. That good. sounds great. Well, that's good. More, that's more for us. Yeah, more for me. <laughs> So, uh, well, cool. Well, listen, this was amazing. Uh, Brother Clint, thank you for coming back again. Thanks I appreciate you back. so much. It was fun. awesome. I know everyone loved it. Uh, we'll have to have one of these conversations around the campfire some night. Oh, <laughs> for sure. I'll tell you some exorcism yeah, I got stories. You, yeah. Oh, exorcism <laughs> stories. Sound, I'm always down for that. Uh, but we do have an Austin. Austin here. says, uh, just sent in a tip for my appreciation. Bought a Colombian boa from you about a year ago, and he is doing just fine. Can't wait for more to come my collection god bless thanks austin. austin thank you so much i appreciate it i'm so glad your bow is doing well and i appreciate everyone in the chats today i hope you guys had a good time uh i certainly enjoyed it Lori, oh, yeah. it was great having Lori involved and stuff like that so uh so yeah so we're gonna go hang out with animals now and uh have a good night so appreciate you guys and we'll see you next saturday right we're gonna be here right? i hope so yep so see you next saturday again thank bye, you so all. much all right thanks guys <laughs> see you bye
Good stuff, man. Thank you so much. That was great, dude.